An entire season for Open Premier will come to an end tonight where one team will be crowned the national champion and take home their cut of 4,000 beautiful dollars. My name is McCormiel. With me is Cash. The Open Premier Finals for the Nace Star League has finally descended upon us. It was supposed to be originally on Monday, but got pushed back here to Wednesday. So we're finally here now for it. Uh, Amber, how are you doing tonight, first and foremost? Yeah, no, I'm doing great. I mean, we've got a great matchup ahead of us. Northwood versus Fisher College. I mean, again, two heavyweight collegiate programs and... We're in for a good one. Uh, we are, absolutely. Uh, it's going to be fun here throughout the entirety of the night. A best of seven series between two incredible teams. Northwood coming off of the Varsity Premier Championship that took place back in April. That was out in Indy for that beautiful best of seven that they were able to take almost swiftly against Oklahoma Christian. A few bumps in the road. I will say, admittedly, there were a few times early on in the series where it looked like Northwood was going to kind of fall off just a touch. But Oklahoma Christian, uh, unfortunately, whether it was you know at their at their hands or the behest of Northwood, uh, unfortunately choked away a couple of the maps early on in that series. Uh, they went down to an 0-3 deficit, one two, but then Northwood was able to close it out in a map six control. Uh, Northwood trying to maybe door dash the series a bit faster though, trying to get it over a bit quicker. Uh, this Fisher roster is very good though. On the other mm -hmm. hand, they're looking to go back to back here instead of open premier cash and that's kind of where the story brings us yeah it's definitely something that they want to continue to do um they've kind of ran you know maybe under the radar in a sense in this open premier division trying to you know steal away um the, these you know championships where they can and, and now all of a sudden northwood gets down to this division and it, it suddenly maybe more contest worthy grand final fisher knows that uh northwood knows that here too but like you said northwood though you know they've just dropped down to open premier it's one that they're looking to kind of take like you said maybe in a quick fashion right we can't understate how good northwood is i feel like every Every time this team is, you know, on the docket or on the screen, you have to talk about, uh, again, how good they have been no matter who they're playing or where they're playing. Um, and, and things yep. can also look to kind of talk. You were talking before the show, the dynasty question mark potential with this yeah. Northwood team. I mean, it's, it's a question you have to ask at this point because of the continued not semesters, but years of collegiate dominance. Yeah, and I, I think that's, you know, I don't even, it's not really a think question. It's more of that started back in the Vanguard year when you had the roster of radial fame, Bink and Infinite. That was probably one of the best teams, if not the best team we've ever seen in collegiate Call of Duty. Um, maybe taking away from kind of some of those shades that we had back in the Ottawa days where we had the Ottawa Black and the Ottawa mm -hmm. Gold rosters, where those two teams were incredible. You had Noisy on that roster. You had Hoop Tape, Herbie, and plenty of others that I could continue to list off and just go over because they were so good. But radial and fame were a part of those rosters radial the only player to ever do a back-to-back -back championship in collegiate now there's opportunities for these teams to continue to go on and maybe even three peat that radio no longer with northwood fame no longer with northwood they're on to pastures new and of course fame playing with rocker last year instead of the cdl uh, that was a beautiful step for him in the in the best direction of his career this year going to be playing on the los angeles gorillas um that really not pertaining any important information to this just kind of letting you know where fame's careers went uh in the present uh but i will say this bink in infinite still on this Northwood roster from yeah. the Vanguard year. Not only did they take home the championship in the Vanguard year for the Nace Star League, but also in MW2 earlier this year, as we mentioned, in Indy, he was able, or both of those guys were able to win a championship with Dak and K-Tob. That's the difference here. That's the big maker. Mock, usually the one that plays for this roster, but instead being subbed in is K-Tob on, on this Northwood University team. And on the opposite side, another big change, Amber. Silly no longer playing with his, with his roster. Phantom stepping up in his place was the coach for this team last season yeah phantoms are going to be a major um you know addition to this team in the sense that you just have an idea it's familiarity right with these players and of course it's going to be an upgrade in a sense and i mean you know silly world champion no knock to him and what yeah. he's been able to do but uh, again you have phantoms in and and suddenly you have uh, rapport going up to uh, an even higher level than than ever before for this fisher college team so it's really exciting to see that again you were able to go you know even on the low end one for one on this trade um and know that the roster isn't taking any kind of hit with silly stepping out Absolutely. And I mean, as you kind of hit on, you know, you have that that cousin, that's that 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 bloodline duo coming back together with Phantoms uh, and Rex, who within the Vanguard year um, played incredible alongside one another, qualified for every single challengers elite except for the one where they decided they wanted to split up uh and guess what neither of them qualified that yeah uh that that challengers elite season so it kind of gives you an idea of the synergistic duo that they have between one another uh and that's going to be on showcase in full here tonight for fisher so talking back to back seasons for the Fisher roster are they going to be able <clears> to do it or will they be brought down a step 
by this Northwood University roster. Because with Northwood and all the accolades they've built up with themselves, again, we're talking dynasty with this team. And that we're not yeah. just talking about a season or two where they're good. This will be their third, almost fourth consecutive championship around one another. And going into the new year of Call of Duty for Modern Warfare 3, they have a chance to take that to the next level once again. Now, I will say this. In the collegiate scene, Amber, this next upcoming year for Modern Warfare 3 going to bring a ton, and I mean a ton, of incredible new talent. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have people from across the board. Saints, I don't know if you know him. Big guy from back in the day for the Call of Duty scene. Yeah, retired for a little bit, back in college, trying to make himself known as a big star. Exotic, another big name, going to be in the collegiate scene this year as well. There's tons of players who have seen what the collegiate scene for Call of Duty has been able to bring, not only for players' careers, but their education as well. And they're yeah. bringing themselves over because they want to better push that narrative forward and be able to compete for the chunks of chains that are being put up in tournaments, specifically like tonight, where the $4,000 prize pool is going to be the name of the game. So, talking series in a broad aspect. Northwood Fisher, which is the better of the two teams? Well, as we've already said, Northwood has the favorite in the, in terms of being able to take in this best of seven series. Mm -hmm. But Fisher having the accolades of being the champions from the last Open Premier Finals, they are going to be very difficult to beat. Not to say that this Northwood roster isn't great, but k being in for Mach definitely changes the vibe up just a touch. It definitely changes the dynamic where, uh, again, maybe you rework just a couple of things. Northwood isn't, you know, flirting with the you know title of a dynasty for no reason because k has won a grand final as, you know, mainstay in this roster in years previous. So mm -hmm. he's not unfamiliar to the spotlight, um, though oh. it's not in a land setting necessarily. A grand final is a grand final, and you know that the squad can square up at any point no matter who's in. So I'm not worried that the game plan changes much at all for Northwood, but like you said, it's still something you have to keep in mind um, and maybe see some different things around the map from them if they need adjustments given this set of roster players that they have. But yeah, Fisher, you know, like you were saying, this isn't going to be something they're just going to roll over and let Northwood take, right? We talk Northwood, North Northwood, all those things. Uh, Fisher knows how to win and they've continuously done it and like you said they've gone yep. back to back and this is something they want to continue to do someone's winning streak ends here tonight as far as grand finals yep. are concerned and um <laughs> i think that's more so a lot of pride and ego on the line in a sense right you're not playing in a you know you're not playing in an esports arena you're not playing somewhere where people are a ton of people are watching a person or anything crazy like that the environment at home you gotta play for uh, again the pride and the chunk of change <laughs> like you were saying where it's like okay who wants their streak to end tonight i think that's going to weigh a little bit more um on these teams mind than anything because everyone wants to snap a winning team streak and both teams are trying to do that for each other here obviously fisher trying to defend their open premier uh division not only that but their back-to-back -back titles and northwood they're just trying to dip their hands in a couple different jars and see what they can take Absolutely. Well, I will say this, folks. We have the match set up now for our shells. The David versus Goliath. Northwood versus Fisher. When we come back from a break, we'll talk a bit more about our maps and set up our grand final and the stage that these guys will be playing on for seven maps. Potentially, of course, that is. First to four, we'll be able to take it. We'll find out who's going to be a champion when we come back from a break.
Well, we're finally back after our break. Teams are lobbied up and ready to go. Before we do that, though, we're going to talk maps real quick. Specifically, mm -hmm. starting with map one, we'll be going to a Mercado Hardpoint to start off this series. Amber, we've, we've said it I don't know how many times. It's the deciding factor in a series. See who comes out of the gate hot. Uh, but realistically speaking, it gives us a gauge on how teams are going to be playing and kind of feeling each other out throughout the series. Mercado, a bit different, though. Obviously, seven hard points on the map. If you're joining us and not familiar with the game of Call of Duty, well, let's catch you up to speed real quick. Uh, Mercado, uh, one of the most intriguing maps, I think, throughout the year. It's grown on me quite a lot. And I think mm -hmm. it kind of stems back to uh, that uh, that big comeback that uh, Sensor's team had. Uh, of course, Boston Breach Academy earlier on in the year, it was like an 80 to 200 and some point comeback. And it was yep. crazy. We watched it live. We were clowning on Boston Breach pretty much the entire game. And then things got real and we were like, wait, wait, I like this. Yeah, I like yeah. this. And then it ended up being one of the best hard points of the whole year. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, I mean, it was speechless. <laughs> it was insane. I mean, I'm now just playing it back in my head and it was unreal to watch. Uh, but it, it definitely grew on me too. Um, yeah, you know, there's still some things I think that could have been improved about it. But as sure. far as seven hills go, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, the perk about that, I guess, is that you're always on the go. Um, and, and high engagements is definitely something that'll be fun to watch between these two teams, given how well repped and good they are. I, I mean, again, at this point, you know, maybe glazing over it in the sense of yeah the, these two teams have some of the most not only collegiate experience but even challengers if not more experience um but that we've ever seen so for them yep. it, it's as simple as you know they're going to take gunfights you know they're going to win a lot of them but who's going to win more who's going to play better there's just a razor thin margin um of error that, that you can have between teams that are playing at this high of a level so mercado is going to be a great one for both ars and subs to tee off on a lake. Uh, there's definitely going to be some lanes that you need your ARs to take over and be able to lock down. Sub machine guns, you got to be able to get quick, got to be able to get ratty um, and a couple spaces to be able to kind of wedge your team in opening or a lane uh, for them to get into the hills. So Mercado, like you said, we say all the time, Hardpoint is a great one to kick things off on, let alone this map between these two teams. It has really everything we want for an intro to a grand final. Absolutely. Uh, map two, just uh, so you kind of have like a little three game forecast, we'll be going into Fortress for that search and destroy. And then, of course, control will be on El Asilo. We won't see Expo. That was a map ban uh, from either of these two teams early on in the veto process. But now, as you see the beautiful transitional phase, we've got ourselves into map one. Map one, total hard point. Who is going to be the better team of the series early on out of the gate? First blood. Varsity roster, Infinite gets on the board first. Sabi going to start making his way up. That's Gunsy for Sport. He's going to put in the headshot early on. 13 seconds go the way of Northwood. Fisher trying to break on in, though. Could happen here in just a moment. Gunsy a little double to start the game. And as you can see, it's actually Bink that's going to be missing for this Northwood roster. It's not going to be Mock stepping out. So Bink bowing out of this one. K-Top and we do have Mock here with us tonight for Northwood. So we'll see how the dynamic change. Either way, the sub coming in right might change things marginally. But as things kick off, I mean, 15 unanswered points in the score early on. And they're looking to retain dominance on this hill. Gunsy trying to get Mixie, trying to get in. Immediately traded. Mock finds a couple. When you look at P2 control, with this gunfight win here, Dax able to take. That's going to give them spawns. That's going to give them the rotation. And it's going to give them a little bit of a cushion lead. Double kill in the middle. Respawn's going to be close enough for Fisher to go ahead and try to contest back into P1. But again, as Amber alluded to beforehand, rotation over towards the bottom of that beautiful cantina building will be held down by the Northwood University roster. Inside of the hill, 50 seconds left on it. Gunsy, nice little shot there. Going to be able to find himself up to five kills. Here comes the break on. Two players left here from the Northwood side. Fisher going to start to push their way forward. Infinite on the staircase, waiting for a challenge in from Phantoms. Not going to happen just yet, but contestant in the hill now for the Fisher side. Infinite here. Stays alive long enough to allow the reinforcements to arrive. It's a three to one trade that now pushes Fisher on the back foot. Rambi will fall. Northwood breaks back. Now spawns get a little split. It's going to be Fisher on the right hand side of the map as Northwood looks to work this left street. What works to get over to P3 and I'm in again just dominating around the map. They're able to lock down spawn. Spawns come in safe and though you're able to find a couple kills for Fisher. You haven't done all of the work yet that you need to in order to get into this one. Sure, it's just one player on time, but everyone's spawning close for Northwood and you still haven't really closed that deficit of the 20 point um, you know, lead that Northwood is able to work for themselves. So you're still fighting here 3v2. As these players look to work off of spawn, and maybe a player working on the pinch, it's going to be K-Top with eyes on that. Wins the gunfight, another one goes down as the hill looks to pop Fisher, already in trouble. 
Yeah, Northwood doesn't have too many bodies here, though, that they can just continue to throw at this. So reinforcements might be able to get here before that initially does come through from Northwood. However, break in towards the bottom. Dylan jump challenge from the top. Not going to be able to find anything else. Once again, a three to one trade that puts Northwood on top of things. If and it's still going to be here and Fisher cleared out. So back to the respawn block. Split spawns now going to be making an artificial pinch here for Fisher. But as Gunsy falls there, that's a big slayer already taken off the board. And as Dylan falls in the process, 30 seconds left of great time here for Northwood to be able to get for themselves. Maybe go ahead and clips that lead just a touch for it. And at this stage of the game, we can kind of have a look at the scoreboard and see, you know, who those slayers are starting to emerge as. And it's going to be Mach and Infinite off to a fairly tough start. Dax's been doing a good job, though, as AR. You can tell with where he's been positioning himself, right? Relaying the comms, though he's four and six. Uh, again, it's very early on in the game, but what he's doing and positioning around the map is absolutely helping the team. Infinite getting around the sub, making things happen. And Gunzi, the one with the hottest start for Fisher College. Hoping to get a couple players on board again so, so early on, but you can see who already has the hot hands here at this point. Such a small hill, difficult to break at times, but Fisher's able to set up on the outside. Unfortunately, not for too long. Northwood breaks themselves on in. So Rambi going to be forced to go ahead from the north side of the map, force his way down. He's got two teammates in from behind. Mox going to be able to find one, though, on the guns. Each raid comes in immediately after the fact. A 20-point lead continuing to grow as Northwood has now found themselves full control of the hill. And look at the spacing they're taking up. I, again, out of Northwood, this isn't shocking, but it's so, so impressive to see how well they don't just, you know, condense and turtle everyone to the one point. You talk about it being a small hill. It gets a little cramped when you have all four players sitting in and around it. The space they're able to take up forces Fisher to spawn far away. 20 seconds left, and they're going to have no chance to get at this. Why? Because that hike across the map, let alone taking gunfights, is going to warrant them five seconds, but they know they have to make the rotation. Three go down in succession. That leaves one player left and Gunzi at the new hill. Sure, spawns come in safe, but... Uh, again, with Northwood's complete map control, they know exactly where these players are. They know exactly where they need to be to find these kills. And now it's just a member of, uh, matter of knocking them down again. And I mean, you detail that absolutely perfectly. There's just no way that Fisher's going to be able to contest even close to that other hard point. So now, sure, you have the entire courtyard set up for yourselves. You have a few power positions in the top of the warehouse. But as things continue to push forward, there is going to be a cruise missile called in over the top. So Shriek invested here from Northwood. Going to try and break themselves in. Mach on five in a row, trying to go ahead and potentially might be getting himself another one. Not going to hit anything. I believe he hit the top of the warehouse there. Blue in the kill feed, still flying through for Fisher. Phantoms with a double. He's going to at least be able to not find three. So, for the meantime, the bleeding has stopped just a bit. 30 seconds of time here. This is a really good opportunity for Fisher to try and tie this game up. Okay, finally... Clips the deficit that they haven't been able to come since P1, and it, really that came down to Gunzi winning and getting the better timing in the alley for this rotation. But as I say that, I mean, again, Northwood always able to throw numbers at you just when you think you're clear, just when you think you've done enough. Northwood show you that you always have to take it one step further. And now they're going to have to bully it out from the front, from hedge side, and good luck taking these ARs off of these power positions and these windows. Dylan Rex from down below, trying to find anything he can. You're going to have to trust yourself, like Savvy, to get in the mix and get those engagements going in order to get this kind of break. But another three for one in the feed. It is Northwood dominance through and through. And though the scoreline is getting close, it has been all Northwood here on this Mercado. It really has, and and I think that, you know, kind of perfectly outlines when you look at the actual slay numbers. You look to the Fisher side, 7-13 and 13 from Dylan, and it really doesn't get much better until you find Gunzi at 13-12. and 12. Only one positive, but the game is still close, and that's the biggest thing that they've been able to do. They've hit and converted on the time that they've needed, and have been able to at least keep the game close for now, but Northwood, once again, full control of the Cantina building as Infinite finds himself three in a row. Backside staircase needs to be careful. Dylan tries to challenge around, but it's three kills once again that go all red. Northwood, as soon as Fisher closed the gap, were able to expedite that process, get themselves a bit of buffer room to work with. It was a beautiful point you made about it's close and they're not even performing slaying wise as well as they could be. Uh, and that's just something they have to take advantage of while they're in that moment because as you said, now they're starting to extend this lead. Now you find yourself down once again, 30 or 40 more points. So the deficit you worked so hard to close, if these guns don't start getting hot by really the start of the next rotation, Northwood could very much put this away. So it was something and it still is something that could possibly work in your favor. You got to think if these guns can get hot, surely this game could turn on its head. Well, Dylan now on three in a row. K-Top's going to be there for a good trade, but Dylan will now find four. So has Eclipse himself to double digits. Beautiful shots there on the mock. He's now one off of a cruise missile. If I'm in, I might be the next one up to challenge, and he'll fall. It's a, it's a slaughterhouse right now here in the P7 side. But Dylan will finally come to a rest. However, utility in the back pocket still keeping this margin close as Fisher. And as they hold this hill down, if they're able to convert on all the time that's left, they could take themselves a lead here as we rotate back to P1. 
doing everything they can, knowing how valuable this time is. I mean, neither of these teams are going to end up wasting any heal time. They know how important each point is versus one another. And just beautiful awareness, beautiful shots coming in from all of the players here. Uh, again, those slang looks different for each player. It has just been a testament of the highest of skill that we can see here in the collegiate scene. And the scoreline starting to reflect that now as Fisher takes their first lead here in this Mercado hardpoint. The second rotation is now popped. This game could not be closer. It's kind of like, a, you know, a well-oiled machine in, the, in that sense, right? Fisher doing everything correctly to keep themselves close simply because each person is willing to do the work. Hill time shared out almost evenly between the team. Ramby sure a minute and 20 kind of leads the way in that regard. But everybody is willing to get down and get dirty, get inside of a hard point, and make sure that Northwood has a hard time being able to take solo gunfights around the map, which they necessarily haven't been doing, but it hasn't really been working out too well for them across the board. A lot of kills have gone the way of Northwood early on in this game. Game. But again, it has not mattered all that much because Fisher is capitalizing on the small little opportunities that the Northwood side has been giving. And that's what's scary is if the slang looks to level out, Fisher could absolutely blow this one away if they need to. And we're getting you know closer to the point where there's not much room left to blow the game wide open and the score line continues to climb and really just handshake leads. But again, as the slang looks to potentially level out here in the back half of this hard point, what does that do for Northwood? We're seeing it unfold here, though they have another 10, 12 point lead. Uh, again, Fisher doing all the right things. And if they continue to execute, they should be able to stay in the running for this one until the very end. Northwood, though, you know they're always going to have one more trick up the sleeves. With about 5 10 seconds left, Northwood had a huge spread of coverage around the map, but they, they challenged solo gunfights in a couple of parts of the map where their coverage just completely fell apart, spawned out. That allowed Fisher to have a three on two gunfight back over towards Cantina, and they made quick work of it. So now here we are. Fisher, on top of things, has a lead, now has a control of the Cantina Hill. They're building themselves a cushion now to work forward, and the guns are starting to heat up just a touch. Three players combining for a three spree right now. Northwood has no opportunity con to contest this, and they're not even going to try to push across the map they're gonna set up for the warehouse and try to convert this into a money hill but if the side of fisher is able to contest we might see fisher being able to take advantage of map one and maybe even find a 1-0 series lead Ah oh man, Phantom starting to tee off as well uh, again it's not pretty the score line or excuse me the the scoreboard score line is oh, starting no. to look good for him here and and it's just worst case scenario for Northwood everyone looking to fall you have one player left still gets traded out again what Northwood was doing the first set of rotations Fisher is doing now and the kills are starting to come with they find themselves 25 points away from the lead Northwood stunned here with how they started a win on the loom here for Fisher. Not exactly what anybody anticipated coming into this series, but very much on the card of possibilities. Two players now pushing. Dylan will line up all three off screen. And now Dak, the last one alive to try and make the hero play. He'll fall. All four down. Fisher, the opportunity to close out map one here. Four players and four arrows now making their way across the map. It's a team push here, but with three seconds left, they have to convert. Dylan will line up another two. Mock there, and with no contestant in towards the point, a stunner in map one. Fisher takes it without silly a 1-0 lead something that nobody thought was going to happen on the mercado hard point and just to really put that in picture for you of what fisher did the last i mean really the back half of, of p7 into what was p3 and as soon as p1 popped northwood got in for a second it was 164 to 163 when P1 popped. And that just goes to show you that they were only able to walk away with 13, 14 more points through two entire hard, two and a half entire hard points. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, what Fisher was able to do there, it was a slow burn that turned into an explosion at the very end. Like you said, they stuck with it. They kept their nose to the ground. They worked, 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 even though the kills weren't necessarily going their way. Like you said, they were doing the little things right, the things that don't reflect in a kill death ratio. Um, and that's why they were able to stay close. And then they trusted their ability to, hey, we know the slang will come at some point. We, we, we've played these guys enough to know that, yeah. uh, again, they're not going to just push us over and, and just, you know, c kill us out the entire map. Um, so they trusted the guns would get there. Dylan Rex there at the very end with the three piece might have been the perfect example of them finally <laughs> arriving. But yeah, once they started finding those kills, they were doing the little things right. And, and usually it's the other way around, right? You find the kills and you mm -hmm. can't execute. So they were in the best case scenario to take over and win that game. And um, it, it was nice to see them do just that whenever they needed it most. Absolutely. You know, I got to ask you a question, right? Um, you know, in, in the middle of the game, you said, hey, you know, we, we see the slaying column turn a bit more in the favor mm -hmm. of this Fisher roster. You know, we might see them be able to not only take a lead, but run away with it. Uh, that's exactly what happened. You know, as a guy that likes to be right, how, how, how did it feel to just perfectly call that? 
Yeah, you know, I mean, when card timing goes the way of the caster, I mean, it's hard to beat. I mean, that, that dope hit is is absolutely through the roof right now. So, uh, again, I, for, for every one uh, card call that goes right, one, one prediction that goes right, um, yeah, the script yeah. has about 1,000 other things that go wrong. So, you know, it feels good, but uh, I just know next map I'm going to call something and it's just going to go egregiously wrong. So we'll, we'll, we'll put yeah. on that one. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's, you know, the dichotomy of it all, right? The yin and the yang, you know, for every exactly. one it's big thing balance. that you have go your way, you know, uh, it, it's the card time that comes back to bite you and you know what, so... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'll say this, uh, Fortress for the Search and Destroy, it's not all doom and gloom here for Northwood. Obviously, it was a big shocker here in mm -hmm. map one, but they're still a very good team. Now, I, I do want to go back to the top of the show where we were kind of talking about, you know, what happens with KTOB coming in this series uh, in, in place of, uh, well, I, I guess now we see it's Bink. Um, but we were talking kind of like, you know, replacing Mock. It was going to be difficult. But now Bink, kind of the uh, the missing half of the duo that's been here for Northwood the longest. Yeah. Um, KTOB, <laughs> they did, uh, you know, in Vanguard win with him in the... Uh, the varsity premier finals in the fall so it's again there's winning experience here mm -hmm. um but I, I think the other half of the coin that we uh you know kind of were asking questions about and kind of was a big storyline we wanted to keep focus on going into the series uh was you know with with silly not being on this roster anymore and with phantoms mm -hmm. being the one to step up and step into this position what does it look like for this team are you going to be able to face the big bad demon that is northwood at least in map one the answer is yes the teamwork, yeah. the coordination is there. And that's the thing that I'm excited to see for Fisher the rest of the series. You and I both had a kind of a prediction in the background of, hey, this is going to be a 4-1 win for Northwood, most likely. I don't think either of us or many of the other people in the collegiate atmosphere that are going to be having eyes on this series would have thought that that one loss mm -hmm. could have potentially come in the map one hard point. This series has completely shifted in a way that is going to only evolve over time. And I think that's the most exciting thing that we yeah. could have had for this best of seven. It definitely is. And again, like you said, everyone here, all eight players have winning experience, so this isn't to discredit sure. any kind of player, but the rosters that you've come to know for these teams, um, I definitely think there there is a trade-off in the sense that you talked about a shift in uh, momentum, a shift in, you know, kind of how the series can play out. Um, I think that comes with losing Bink. I think Bink and, like you said, Infinite, uh, perhaps the winningest duo in, in collegiate history, right? You lose the other half of that duo. They've been a part of this roster for the longest. They've played together for, for so, so long. Um, yeah. I, I think that definitely is a missing link from this team. And again, KTOP absolutely has won with the squad before, but uh, Bink has always been a core to this roster. And I think, you know, maybe feeling a little bit of him not being in the starting lineup could be a thing. Uh, but I think that's also maybe shifted you know and maybe exemplified a bit more with also phantoms and dylan rex being back together on the other side for fisher i think that's definitely something that is kind of making that feel a little bit worse and, and we saw there on the mercado hard point right how well phantoms and dylan rex play off of one another yeah. they are just so so compatible um, play styles and uh, again of course being family that definitely uh, gives you some rapport by default but uh, again Ramby and Gunzi also pairing in there are, are just fantastic players to to have uh, for Fisher College yep. for this run and yeah, we said Northwood was a favorite I, I think without Bink I do think they're hurting a touch and like I said the margin of error is so so small that even hurting a touch is enough for Fisher to yep. blow that door open take advantage um, and, and use you know the chemistry they have as a team to take advantage of that well we'll put a bow on map one Dylan, Phantoms play so well off each other. When one gets going, the other one follows in tow. That's exactly happened on the Mercado Hardpoint, but now we find ourselves in a for fortress search and destroy. Offensive round here for Northwood to start things off. They've got themselves full control of the museum building and towards the middle of the map. Big problem is, though, they don't really have any sort of site control over towards A, and you can see where Fisher is set up. You've got Gunzi, you got Phantoms looking over towards the A courtyard. It is going to be one trying to challenge out, though. Infinite with the bomb in hand, and you have K-Top all the way in the back line. Dylan will open up with the first blood there on to DAC, so that'll give a 4-3 advantage to Fisher early on 35 seconds ticked off the clock and it's still draining Northwood needs to find themselves a little bit of space over here on a it has been trying to watch trying to get eyes on anyone and when he does he gets his head ripped off Gunzi gonna find the kill gonna lay down phantom swings the corner able to find the kill and now you're trying to do a dance Mox able to find one but we are gonna have to come your way bomb's going to be down the swarm comes in you're able to find <laughs> one but again kick down the doors of SWAT team surely one of you can get the trade Fisher do just that early round on the board and as you kind of said on the break off, not convincing site control, if any at all. k yeah. was the only one playing there for the A site. And I, my thing with Search and Destroy's objective play, I think it gets swept under the rug a bit too much. Now, granted, it was only one round, but we've seen a lot of COD. We've seen a lot of MW2, so I feel justified <laughs> in saying that. But uh, again, objective play, when it gets put to the wayside, when it's not prioritized, you get picked early. You know, now suddenly it's harder to make a bo uh, the, the bomb, the bomb site, you know, a teammate, put the timer mm -hmm. um, on your side. So... We'll see what Fish looks to do on the other side as it looks to be a little more decisive towards this A site early on. Yeah, they're going to have two bodies here, try to press up on it. 
You can see K Top trying to play the default back off, and Dak trying to press himself up and towards Art. Kunzi will lay down, look for the double hop up on the window. K Top was stunned out. 95 HP, but the bomb goes down. Rambi backs off. Challenge for the first blood still on the loom. Back able to find it. Now they're going to work their way through Art. But again, we talk about that added teammate with the bomb being down. Now 30 seconds to work with. Seven and a half on the diffuse. So Ooh. they need to work these kills quickly as everyone is sitting back for Fisher. You're going to be running into irons. And it's still 3v3. Yeah, Fanta's got knocked down to 2 HP. And it's very difficult to be able to challenge these back eddies. Mock going to be looking, but he needs to go. He needs to start pushing his way forward. You only have 18 seconds left. Your teammates on the opposite side of the map. You're trying to create a push play, but the pinch doesn't come out. So now K-Tob the last alive. Dylan on the head glitch in the back. And with 10 seconds left, there's going to be absolutely no opportunity for you to be able to kill all three and get the defuse. Quick two rounds go on the board for Fisher and offense in the defense. Looks pretty tasty to me. And as soon as Northwood was able to get the first kill, Dak able to find the first blood and start working through art. I mean, uh, again... Nearly 15 seconds has already ticked off that bomb timer. And when you think of that seven and a half second defuse, right? You're looking at, oh, we have 30 seconds left. We really have about, you know, 22, 23 seconds. So it ends up being a smaller chunk of time than uh, what you mm -hmm. might think. So like you said, Mock perfectly uh, described him, you know, not working quick enough. You have three players to clear out. I know you're wondering, you know, whack-a-mole, which one's going to pop out first, but you don't even have the time for that. So Fisher prioritized the bomb. It works out well for them, and now Northwood going to try to get over here with a bit more urgency. Yeah, in a 1v1, that 45 seconds feels like an eternity. In a 4v4, it's, it's just mere seconds that you have, but Dylan Rex will open up with one onto Infinite. Another first blood goes the way of Fisher College. It's the second for this game. Five in a row for Dylan, continuing the hot streak that he had inside the first map. He'll fall, though, on the op end, but now it's a one versus three. Mock last alive once again. He's got attack in hand, but he's got three players to work through. The bomb down over on the A site, and realistically, if everybody just kind of pairs up together, which I'm assuming Fisher will probably do. This is going to be a very difficult retake. Phantoms will pepper some shots into him back all the way off. And now Mach with 50 HP and 44 seconds is in a pickle. Would you look at who's on the score column? <laughs> Dictating things early for Fisher. It's going to be Dylan Rex and Phantoms and Gunzy from the Crow's Nest. <laughs> okay. Finds the kill. <laughs> and uh, yeah, again, it's, it's just very dominant out of Fisher through three rounds to think that we're potentially halfway through this hard point. And it's looking just like it in a sense. Most has had no answer for, for what Fisher has thrown at them. And pretty simply, again, it, it's been objective play sure offensively North or excuse me, Fisher has taken advantage of, but I kills. I mean, they're simply getting outslayed uh, around the map. They're losing in first bloods, but not only that, mm -hmm. the mid round um, is also breaking down for them. They're out of position, taking gunfights that maybe they don't have a teammate available for a trade uh, to get. And so as we look to figure out what's going on with the lobby, Fisher absolutely exploiting any kind of weakness that, that Northwood has here in Search and Destroy. All right, well, the 3-0 lead for the side of Fisher, barring any sort of things over here in the background, it was a player disconnect on the side of Northwood University. <laughs> so that being said, we have found ourselves in a situation where we're back with you again. Hello, folks. It's a pleasure to be able to bring you this Call of Duty action here tonight. It's been a fun series to watch so so far. I mean, we have a seven-game series potentially in front of us, uh, but I think the big storylines is that we've all kind of you know been, been talking about for, what, the last you know, 15 minutes since the hard point ended. Yeah. Um, Fisher looks good. And I, I don't want to, you know, credit this to, you know, it maybe being a silly issue because I don't think that was uh, any sort of the problem. Um, but you do have a coach now coming in as a player who is also one of the best players within the challengers of the last two years of COD before the MW2 season. Mm -hmm. um, so not only do you get that knowledge of being able to spectate the game from an outside perspective for all that time and then be able to use that knowledge back in game. Um, but now you're able to pair that with uh, the, the connection that you've already built with those same players. So it's not like you're just, you know, injecting somebody different or somebody that doesn't have any sort of insight into the team, into your comp, you're getting somebody who already has synergy and knows how to talk to everybody, knows how to just, knows how to just talk to people. That's yeah. the most important thing. When you're communicating with your teammates, it's everything. So being able to call out the important things, being able to, you know, kind of give those little boosts of like, hey, nice, nice. You know, you get one like that. Like like those little interjections are, are just those things that your brain picks up on you feed off the energy of your teammates and that is able to propel you forward so fisher looks very good in this early <clears> series uh, it's not all doom and gloom for northwood just yet but they need to kick themselves on the high gear specifically down to no three deficit and already down 1-0 in the map count this is looking like not only a different northwood roster but one that was not ready to play today it definitely seems like they've come out flat. Um, I, that's really a, a good way to describe it. The, the slang sure took off for them in the hard point, but it's just kind of been lackluster, a little uninspired for mm -hmm. them um, for, for now. And again, 
just been a map and a half, so, you know, it's not to say, like you said, doom and gloom, or that it's all over yet, but uh, Fisher really have come out like, yeah, maybe with something to prove in a sense, it feels like. Um, uh, again, these are two of the best collegiate teams that, you know, we have in sure. the space to, to be able to watch, so uh, again, Fisher coming out and being able to win the way they have, again, the scoreline was close in map one, of course, but but the way they were able to kind of, you know, stick with it, it didn't start out very well for them, and they were able to swing that into a victory, how well they were yeah. able to start in the Fortress Surge and Destroy is definitely a testament to just being well prepared and i don't know if that means scrims for this team on mw2 <laughs> i don't know if that means just playing with each other for the last couple of weeks um mm. but it doesn't seem like they just got off mw3 and booted up mw2 and just yeah. started talking to each other for the first time in a couple of weeks i mean it seems like you know they're <laughs> feeling really comfortable playing with each other um even at this point in the game and, and you know it's something that like you said they, they feel good enough and ready for that northwood have kind of just been caught asleep in a sense yeah, I, I guess the best way to kind of just kind of put a, a little nice bow on this is to just say Fisher's not a bad team. We no. just knew that Northwood was the better team coming into this. So it's not that this is a surprise because Fisher's just this, uh, you know, terrible team coming up against Northwood. It's just more of a surprise because Northwood just doesn't seem to be playing up to the standards uh, that we have the map because we were talking Dynasty before the series even started. So yeah. we're going to step aside, take a quick break. We'll come back with an update on the search and destroy in the series overall. Until then, stick around, stay tuned. We'll be back with the grand finals for the open premiere in just a second. We're back at it. 4-4. Now Rambia first blood to open things up. Mock a little trade back on the op side. So Northwood down lives yet again in another round as Phantoms is able to pick up a good kill. It is still 3-0 for the side of Fisher, looking to potentially be a 4-0 lead here, which I don't think anybody expected. But on the back end, 45 seconds left. Defuse timer still on the loom. Mock and K-Top still trying to fight back to site. Fisher winning another first blood to start off the round. Uh, again, something they've dominated here. Winning three out of four here in this potential four round advantage that they'll have, but it's just slow retake out of Northwood. And I mean, again, you're going to put a sniper into play. Cool. That'll find a quick kill, but it's just been slow. It's been split. Um, I'm shocked at how isolated the players are playing from one another, given that they've had such a hard time, not only finding kills, but, but trading them out regardless, as you said, going into the break, Fisher is playing at a level we expect Fisher to very much so um and Northwood kind of just has to take it right now until now it's their turn right to figure it out to, to step yeah. up and um get things sorted for themselves I have a suspicion this, this is going to be you know a best of seven that uh, again really could have a lot more surprises left in it yeah Fisher right now though poised and two rounds away from taking a very quick 2-0 advantage against Northwood here but still a couple rounds left Northwood still has time to figure it out but bomb left in sight for the moment as they're looking to try to work towards A at least. Kind of funny, you know, we're always talking about the other teams playing against Northwood. It's like, okay, who has to make the, you know, the, the adjustments throughout the game? It's always the opposite team. It's never usually Northwood. So the fact that it's changed here is, is a bit surprising. But first blood, once again, knocked off the board. Fisher takes it now four to five in the round count where they've had the first blood advantage. Infinite will try to take some shots. There was a bit weak. Didn't want to challenge it immediately. Dylan Rex in the opposite side window and top tools. This is such a difficult position to be in if you are Northwood. No presence over towards A except one player there, but it's a 1v2 glorified. K-Top gets a nice little trade, tries to snap back on to Phantoms, but they'll find the kill there. One versus three now for Infinite. He's just in a spot where he just has no real opportunity to move around the map. They have the entire little basically triangular method here. 
and they just have to be able to three take as a team over towards a infinite get some shots out a little snake for the culture 23 seconds left might try to get the bomb down here gunsy's gonna be the first one to challenge runs at him with a knife his teammate helps for support over the top fisher 5-0 advantage one round away from completely sweeping northwood in a search and destroy and funny thing is talking at the start of the night kind of going over how these teams you know played in the regular season i'd said search was uncharacteristically a weaker mode for fisher throughout the regular season seems like they got taken to you know a lot of six fours couple six fives even losing searches uh being you know i think one of the only maps they dropped was a search and destroy um good for them to see them come out and play this well uh, especially against northwood but yeah it was one that i was thinking maybe um if north would come out and take map one surely map two would be a lock but like you said you know not to not to overstress how mind-blown we are that, that Northwood is underperforming through at least a couple of maps. Fisher have absolutely come prepared. And Infinite's nade might be... <laughs> might just be the cherry on top of the icing on top of the cake. Oh, how symbolic of the series so far. A nade that should have went through the window just bounces back, takes not only himself out, but his teammate with him in the process. And it's it, it just, it's so poetic how Poetry things emotion. continue to go. Fisher College, 6-0 over Northwood. In a search and destroy, a 2-0 series lead to give themselves now. Amber, this is a series we have been waiting for the collapse, <laughs> at least in the first two maps of the Northwood roster. Uh, this is uh, this is fun. I'm not going to beat it with a dead horse anymore. Uh, we're just going to talk about the good things that Fisher did throughout that search and destroy, which was a ton. It was everything. I, I mean, again, it was objective I guess control that was, I guess, on the oh, A site. Okay, good. Okay. okay. Surely, surely our math isn't that bad. Uh, yeah, it, it was everything. Um offensively took good care of the bomb got the yeah. bomb planted great positions though they sunk back uh offensively to, to make northwood come to them well northwood just did not have any kind of clock management i, I mm -hmm. mean did not try to work with any urgency to find the kills we're always in a man disadvantage situation which again can, can slow down your push on a retake or yeah. towards the site uh, understandably but you gotta know and it just seems like uh, you gotta know that you need to take some of these gunfights, and it just seemed like they're playing with a level of timidness that we don't usually see. Um, and, you know, it ended up hurting them because there was just a confidence coming from everyone from Fisher College and that search and destroy. I mean, Dylan Rex pulls up a sniper in the back half and just is connecting left, right, and center. And for Northwood, mm -hmm. it seems like they're just a little shell-shocked right now at how things are going for themselves. But Fisher did, did everything that you'd want to right. Only lost first blood in one round. Uh, beyond that, the mid-round, they completely dominated. I don't know that Northwood yeah. was ever in a man-up situation at any point. If, if anything, they had it tied at best or were able to get a trade. But trading was horrific out of them in that search. And Fisher just played their numbers and played it to a team. Yeah, I think the only round where they had the numbers advantage was the second round where it was bomb down situation. They get the first blood, but then they have to retake the map. Everybody yeah. was playing slow, and it seemed like they were playing almost apprehensive against this Fisher roster, which was really weird for me, at least, to see, uh, because we don't usually typically see that out of Northwood. They're a very fast-paced, aggressive team. So mm -hmm. the fact that they almost felt like they were on the back foot through most of that surge and destroy felt a little odd and almost off-putting uh, to me. And I'm sure you felt that kind of same way. There seems yeah. to be almost an angst out of this Northwood team right now. So uh, we'll step aside here. We'll take a break. We'll come back for a map three. Fisher will have, of course, a lot of momentum going into this next control map. Uh, Northwood, a lot of things to talk about during this short interval so when we come back map three we'll see if fisher can take a commanding 3-0 lead and put themselves at series point or if northwood can finally bounce back and show us a glimpse of that championship capability i'm ryan pruitt i'm a sophomore at the university of alabama at birmingham i'm a full-time college student a future nurse a small business owner and a cadet in the U.S. Army ROTC. I'm the son of an Army officer, so I know the opportunities the Army provides. I knew the ROTC scholarship was the right choice for me to pay for the college that I wanted to go to. More than the money, I have people who are encouraging and committed to my success. I have big goals, and the Army is helping me make them a reality. I'm future Second Lieutenant Ryan Pruitt. That's my ROTC story. What will yours be?
Los Angeles Comic Con is back at the LA Convention Center December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Meet stars from hit movies and TV series like Matt Smith, Jamie Campbell Bauer, Elijah Wood, Sean Astin, Rain Wilson, and so much more. Shop over 800 exhibitors and artists. Experience the vibrant cosplay community and immerse yourself in the gaming and anime hall with tournaments for Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter all weekend long. Get your tickets for LA's favorite comic, gaming, anime, and pop culture convention at ComicConLA.com. Well, it's been an intriguing series here so far. Fisher College oh, over North. Map one was exciting. It was a big barn burning hard point that started out strong for Northwood, but Fisher were able to keep it close. Slaying column wasn't there initially, but they were able to bring it back to themselves pretty quickly. Uh, it kind of is that, that seventh hard point ended and we got to that second set of rotations. So uh, Amber, as we kind of have had now an opportunity to kind of take everything in and yeah. kind of theory craft a bit of where this series could potentially go from here on out we have ourselves a bit of a series that could be a, a touch of fun if it already yeah. hasn't been yeah we got a sort of bit of a situation on our hands um is another way to put it as well again we we came in talking right northwood the heaviest hitter that, that we've seen in collegiate space um fisher college uh, no, no team to sneeze over themselves, but they have come to play tonight, plain and simple. And the scoreline reflects it. I mean, again, you said it was a, a close hard point. It was 250 to 177, but the last two and a half hard points, Northward was only able to take 14 points. So, uh, again, show that Fisher really squared up. And that's, like you said, that second set of rotations kicked off. 6-0 in the search and destroy on Fortress, <laughs> which, uh, again, remembering who's playing, um, you know, it's it's just insane they were doing that. Dominated in every avenue of a search and destroy. First bloods, objective play, retaking, man advantage situations, everything you would want in a perfect hard point, barring, you know, losing a first blood one round. It, yeah. it was a perfect hard point for them. Like you said, this is where it gets fun because Fisher could go to series point here and <sighs> you still know in the back of your mind Northwood could flip a switch or... I don't even know for them if it's as simple as flipping a switch at this point um, because the panic button's right beside that and they're kind of <laughs> close to hitting either. They really got to make a decision yeah. here. But you know it's always a possibility. Even if Fisher sure. gets to series point, even if the rules were reversed and Northwood is here, you still know that either team could, could push this to a game seven. So I'm not ruling out a game seven at any point of this, um, but Fisher could put themselves in a damn good position to put uh, to put themselves up at 3-0 let alone maybe a, a 4-0 close out here we were talking doordash but it might just be the other <laughs> way and yeah. for fisher this control is going to be everything i i just look i just want the gameplay to start i don't even got much else to say <laughs> I, I i really want to see what's gonna happen I, i'm just excited as everyone watching this i am just yeah. chomping at the bit to see um again it's not af often like you were kind of shaping up in the search of joy not often you say Northwood ball in your court to make an adjustment. Yeah, you usually don't. Well, you know, the ball is in your court to make a decision here in the near future. This weekend, well, there's a couple big things coming up. One of those things being the LA Comic Con. The LA Comic Con is producing an expansive and exciting esports and anime experience in the West Hall of the Los Angeles Convention Center on December 1st through the 3rd. Your pass will get you access to gaming stage tournaments, stream studios where you can watch your favorite streamers play games, interact with them, say a quick hello, and the free play zone which will have the hottest PC and console games. That also comes with what they're calling the Mix, which is 10 indie games where they'll have developers on site where you not only can play test those, but also discuss with a couple of developers that are there on what maybe they could improve, a couple of bugs that they could fix, but realistically just get an experience like no other. Click the panel below and use the code Level Up for $5 off your gaming pass, and we'll see you at LA Comic Con December 1st through the 3rd at the LA Convention Center in the West Hall. And as I said before, you know, I, I, being a fan of anime and gaming, of course, um, that seems like something that'd be right up my alley. And if I wasn't in Boise that weekend, I would probably be in L.A. A little expensive to get out there. I'll admit it, you know, being a Florida boy and all, but does sound like a good time. So if you are in the L.A. area or would like to maybe travel just a bit further than you might expect during a normal vacation, go ahead and check that out. Once again, use code level up and click that panel below to be able to get yourself your gaming pass and five dollars off of your purchase. Um, yeah, I, I'll be honest. Um 
that 6-0 search and destroy really did surprise me in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought after that map one, it was going to be a, a moment where we saw Northwood falter just a bit. I didn't think we'd see them break. I thought we'd see them bend. Uh, but the first two maps, we, we talked before the series, we wanted to kind of, you know, highlight the first three maps to really say, hey, look, we get a combination of all three modes. We get a little bit of that Neapolitan ice cream. We get to sit there yeah. and enjoy the chocolate, <clears throat> you know, the basic vanilla and a little bit of strawberry. It's great. You get a good taste. Right now, we've had a sample uh, of, the, of the strawberry and the chocolate. That's kind of what we have in the mix. Will we see that vanilla, that base standard line of Northwood being able to compete the way that they do in this control upcoming? The slaying yeah. numbers were not great in that first hard point for Fisher, but it was the fact that they kept it close and then were able to outslay Northwood in map two that scares me because when Phantoms and, and, and Rex were able to combine the two of them together and allow Sabby and Ramsey or Ramby just to run around the map, that created a scary concoction. First Blood, yep. sure, they're everything. If Fortress is a small map, you can very easily get mixed up just a touch, but a good team like Northwood should never fall 06 to an opposition, specifically in a grand final where they've proven themselves time and time again. They've won four straight in Ace, four straight. That is not something that comes with a very easy kind of a kind of pedigree. It's not an easy thing to do, let alone winning one. Winning two is hard. Three is incredible. Four is borderline unheard of. It is a ridiculous mm -hmm. standard to be able to put yourselves to. And now that you've put yourselves there, you have to continue to live up to that standard. Anything but that is not good enough. So you have to be at your best of these next four maps at the very least if you want to be able to complete this sweep of them in what would be a six-game conclusion. But right now, Amber, you hit it perfectly. It you were talking about it as we came in from the break this is all in the court of northwood right now there is nothing that fisher needs to do except sit back relax and keep the foot on the gas they absolutely need to and fisher just have to take care of business like you're saying for northwood it's again a dynasty in question now only two have been played um so uh, again it's something that really this control kind of hinges on but yeah we just you've never seen them hit the mouth quite like this and, and for yeah. fisher they're coming out and just playing their call of duty they are playing not even unexpected right they're going out and doing what they need to it's just uh you know very impressive for how composed they've been the entire time especially with how tested they were in map number one i think the cielo control much like the Mercado, it's going to give us a full scope again of, of all of the positions, right? Fortress, like you said, can kind of be a ticky-tacky, a weird search and destroy at times because it's such slowed down mode. You don't quite get the full scope of kind of that run and gun play style we saw in map one. Here on yep. CeeLo, even more so than Mercado, both ARs and subs alike, you are going to see the scoreboard really put separation as to where these teams are in the series. And this is Northwood's one of their final chances if it ends up being a sweep to to kind of answer back and to, to hit back and show fisher that okay we're not quite done here yet and uh that was just you know quite the fluke quite the slip up on our part for the first couple of maps uh this is CeeLo is going to be damn entertaining it, it really will I, I mean and just to kind of piggyback off your point those smgs mid map that's going to be your kind of stronghold you're going to be the ones getting your team's position in towards that a site on that control point those ars out towards the north portion of the map on that radio tower those power positions that you can get from that so crucial throughout the game watch as the top of the terrace you can watch those double doors from each side of the peak out from the middle map building great then you look to the opposite side of the map you look to that b site you see those big windows you see the top of party you look over towards the field side and you say hey this is a really open area we cannot allow our ARs to falter here because the SMGs need to get aggressive and they need to be the ones that can play over towards that fencing wall bang's not going to be much of an option here so Ramby up top going to find his way over towards the middle of the map it's going to be the offensive side here for Northwood University two players out over towards B Infinite will find the first blood on the round Savvy will fall initially 30 to 29 the B point seems like it wants to be the point of contestion for Northwood early on Double bodies on it. First stick of progress going to come in. Mock with a good nade. Dak going to get in the mix here early and try to find a couple kills. Push this line of defense back for Fisher, and they've done just that. Second stick of progress nearing completion. As Fisher finally gets a couple kills traded back out. Northwood's still in a position. Trying to find a couple kills before they get back on this one. Clock being stopped as well, so they're in a good spot here. Up one life. This next wave of kills, though, going to determine really whether the site gets captured or not respawn the bread and butter of northwood problem is though they've let this b site sit for just a bit too long while fisher was i mean they just kind of played a bit too passive northwood had the ability to get those reinforcements back over they flooded through that field side but now things can start to get a bit more mixy in towards the middle of the map k top there with dak 
find Dylan for the time being. Another kill goes the way of Northwood. So as we sit here with the spread, north side of the map controlled by Fisher, but now south, it's Northwood who are trying to contest themselves on the A point. Double stack, now it's going to be a triple, expediting the process. First two ticks of progress going to be there. Contested in for a moment. Dylan finds one, but it's traded out shortly after the fact. Now Fisher on the opposite end. They're playing defense, but they're only going to basically be trying to protect the tick over at B. And they're still on for the contest for a moment, so we'll see what kind of kills they can find here. Ants are going to be none. As you said, they are just defending for a tick at this point. Dylan's going to try to get up, get an advanced position here to try to push the spawning line back, spawn them in that back right corner of the minimap. As teammates still working off the spawn block, trying to get back over towards this site. 90 seconds on the clock. Northwood with the two life advantage as well. They have mid map mm. control. Now they have field control. Now they're going to push forward. And this could be the moment that they close out the round. I mean, the spawns are just too far deep, and they have so many players pressed up in towards the middle of the building, unless Rambi's able to make a hero play here for the double contest. I mean, you see the wall banks come through on the fence, but he's not going to be able to touch the hill in time. There were three players from Northwood stacked up on that B point, and realistically, what that round came down to is Fisher just playing too apprehensive over on the B site for defense. They didn't want to throw lives away at the early portions of the round, and unfortunately, that ended up leading to Northwood having more reinforcements there, them being able to basically get two uncontested ticks of progress at A, or excuse me, at B, and then flipping the map back when Fisher was trying to make sure everybody got taken off of that field side. They just went, got a triple stacked it. Basically, that's going to end in about 10 seconds of time, you know, on, 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 on the bad side when you have three players stacked on it. So uh, and that's just a good round on offense there by Northwood. We'll see what they have in response here for Fisher on the defensive side. Phantoms, not a kill through one round. Very uncharacteristic and definitely something you can point to as, oh, well, uh, leaning on that slow start that they were able to have. They find the first couple of kills here, but again, I just think what worked so well for Northwood was that aggressive pacing. You talked about it. There's a team, that's their, that's their team identity is how fast they look to play, and if they can keep that going here on a low, especially with how well round one went for them, they should be in good shape here. Infinite, trying to get in the mix. No, someone is playing out left. Not quite in a position to be able to find these kills just yet. Maybe trying to work a pinch, but for now, A site safe and sound. Two ticks of progress in as well. And again, Northwood, just no real urgency to get over towards the site for a retake. And they have the lives to work with. No ticks of progress over towards B. And you can see how far pushed up Northwood are into the spawn side of Fisher. So this is going to be a big, uh, at least kind of shining bright spot for the moment. Not too much to worry about if you are Northwood now. Fish are going to have to try and recollect their thoughts and push as a unit back over towards B. But if you keep taking solo gunfights across the map, you're going to yield the same results here. Stagnation. What you had in round one, that's why you weren't able to win on the defensive end. Two kills in the back lines. Go for Dak. He's up to three in a row. Now seven kills on the game leads to the lobby. 23 apiece. Tied at lives. Minute 42 left in the round. Still plenty of time to work here on the offensive end. But you need to clear out your spawn. At least that's the first one. You still have K-Top lurking over by the building. And we'll see if they're aware of that. If he can play this timing right. Should be able to find a kill and at least gets one infinite with another. So that's another two down. Last two are going to be in warehouse, but uh, again, you're just working. I don't know the clock, but back through your spawn just to try to get back in position to take some of these gunfight phantoms. The furthest player pushed up, having the slowest performance in this control. So you're hoping maybe this turn of events could get him going, could ignite the team. But they had two minutes and 10 seconds when they captured the A site. That time has been cut in half effectively now, just over 60 seconds to work with, and they are not making kind of move. I'm not sure what fandoms are trying to do there, but infinite. <laughs> Easy pickings for him, and now again, going to look to get aggressive. Fisher, no real answer here through the first round and a half. Well, there's two kills to respond, though, so this is the opportunity for them to get it over on to B, excuse me. K-Tob now. Last player alive here to try and make the contestion. There's two players stacked in the point. Now a third one's going to get there as well. You can see that progress starting to ramp up in intensity. First stick of progress going to be completed. Nate on the K-Top will knock off the reinforcements that were there. So off the spawn block, it's going to be a sprint to get back over towards the objective. Dak, top window, knocked down. Last player is out of the site. It's Gunzi. Sabi trying to be the hero here. Takes down Mock, and that's going to be the B site completed. We're tied up in one apiece. The control, beautiful as it goes. Offense, handshake. And as simple as the silo goes, it can just be one, two, three, I mean, even better, four down. Completely switch things for you, and that was the turn that Fisher needed to close this round out. They got a good wave of kills and were able to make a good push behind it. Now they find themselves, as you said, making this even. Northwood going to be back on offense here where, uh, again, it was relatively simple for them. They attacked those zones, and we're left with Fisher just defending one tick over at B. We'll see what approach they take this time. Gunzi out to 10-5 and five on a three spree coming into the round. A bit more balanced of an approach coming in from the Northwood side. 
Dead silence popped. Gunzi trying to make a route through the middle of the building. Unfortunately, though, found out with a stun check. Infinite going to get knocked down just a touch. HP low. Gunzi still at 100. K top falls. Phantom support over the top and mock the last one alive over towards that B site. Turns around, though, finds Gunzi. So that's a double here. Ooh. It allows Northwood to equalize things out. And now they have the entire north side of the map for free. The only one here is Dylan to try and make a play through the backside. But the flank of the spawn, not going to happen. K top snuffs it out. B site now, progress being worked towards it. First tick of progress. Going to be good. Second one on the way. And that has been a problem with the sub here and around warehouse. We're gonna pop Deddy once again out to 10 and 8. Ooh, Dylan Rex with the absolute savior medal of a lifetime. Able to cover his teammate. 10 strike kill feed. Infinite gonna snake these boxes to high heaven. And end up getting the teammate cover as well. B site captured just under two minutes on the clock and a three life advantage once again. I mean, these rounds could not be playing closer. Fisher College gonna try to string together a response now. They find themselves on the defensive side. Thing is, they're defending the other site. So we'll see what kind of formation they take here. But you talked about Cell Tower and how important that was to take. K Top finds the pick on Rambi. Now gonna be in position here to look over his teammates. I mean, these SMGs, you, you, I mean, you knocked it out with Dak, but realistically, when you allow them to get mixy inside of the inside of uh, the Cecilo mid middle thing, it, it, it gets very difficult for your team to find any sort of positioning back on the opposite end. Right now, Northwood putting Fisher inside of a flurry, but Dylan at least able to find one. Mock spotted out, but pops up, takes Gunzi off the map. Ramby, good trade. Minute and 20 left. Time just kind of stalled out right now. Fisher doing a good job of keeping Northwood at least off the point. Ramby will make his way forward. Infinite checks that left side corner. Realize the contestant is there, so they know that they at least have one on the point. He'll back all the way off, and basically it's flipped now. Fisher has the power position of the radio side. Infinite's playing inside the warehouse, waiting for the reinforcements to get here. Northwood has north portion of control. Back trying to make a long pick all the way over the B site. Able to find one, and now you're trying to see anything else you can. Mock with a frag. Might be able to make something connect here. Nose Gunsy Zarin again, a beautiful lethal usage out of him there. The team's going to swing. They're going to try to find his Dak finds a second one. Now they're going to get on this one. Dylan Rex has the awareness, but isn't able to string the shots together. Mox able to find a second. The stack comes in. This should be GG's go next. I mean, there's all four on it. Rambi's going to try and fly through the back line. Might be able to contest here, but just a second too late. Really, realistically, more like a quarter or a half a second too late. But... Northwood on the offense once again makes it stick and I, honestly although that round came down to a, a multiplicative factor of things specifically with them getting that B site first uh, it was just recognizing that Gundy was a little bit weak on that child from that left hand side and then that nade that was cooked perfectly rested right at his feet that EOD is not going to provide that connection after or excuse me the protection after you get those first two bullets on the player already weakened up so it finishes him off takes him off the site and that was the first domino that they needed it was a four versus three on the site from then on out and they were able to win the majority of their gunfights four stack the site took the a site out of commission so now a 2-1 lead northwood finally looking up an opportunity to close out this map here in this defensive round however first blood goes the way of fisher they're going to be over towards b with relatively no contestion it's going to be a south side push here through the backside building a flank but fisher's aware of it they've turned around guns are ready infinite shots to the wall bang nice is, is going to be at least able to find one second one out the doorway phantoms there infinite falls b site vacated they still have control, but they know their co players lurking. K Tob having a quiet game. Doing just what he needs to do for the team. Phantom's gonna find the kill through the back, and two players playing white is definitely something that, you know, they're, they're sending intentionally to try to hunt down this player, know that that's secure, and now they can put bodies on the site, look to stop the clock, and look to work this B progression. And everyone from the south side for Northwood working up, trying to find another lane, another opening. This is about how it went the last go around, and this is about to be the push of the tournament. Two players on the site still. Phantom's going to be the only one really on the point for contestion, at least at the moment. Two players now, three here from Northwood, and that's the collapse that they needed. So put themselves in good positions. Two ticks of progress. All that Fisher was able to accrue themselves after that flurry of kills started out this round four. Nate over the top, going to try and find K-Tob, but he gets a wall bank shot onto Guns. He can hop back up. Beautiful snake onto Dylan. Gives him a little two-piece. 35 seconds left in the round, and now they have to make the decision. Do they continue to continue, or excuse me, do they continue to send these forces over towards B, or do they fly down towards A and try to make it stick there? There's only one player there, but they don't have that information. Now they do, though. They'll stall the clock out at 28 seconds, and it looks like the reinforcements will trek their way to A. And this was so challenging, and what I was nervous for Northwood in the first round, but they ended up winning. When you look trying to get progress at both sites, if you can't secure a site and now you have less than 30 seconds left, you kind of start to get that, that beaded sweat on the forehead, right? Knowing that, okay, we've got to make one of these sticks. We can't really afford to get wiped again. Otherwise, you have that long hike off spawn. You got to pick a site. And even if the two two split it, you know you're going to be running into some gunfights as you work across the map. So they're trying to make this A site work. Just one tick of progress needed. And with Dylan Rex playing up Cell Tower, that's really backing down any kind of flanked coverage here. K-Top might have just found an opening, might have slipped the net. 
and now have found themselves an opportunity in. But again, Rambi still alive, still earning this progress. Northwood gonna have to reposition oh. and reallocate their resources. See, but this is fine though. You're you're completely okay with allowing that to happen because the thing is, is Phantoms was able to slip the net, get over towards the B site, started to work progress on that zone, and that forced Northwood to have to shift their attention back over towards B. They were fine with allowing A to go, but you cannot afford to let that B site go. Now, two ticks of progress already completed. The last one gonna be within the round win here for Fisher. Mock on the back line, really widespread map coverage. But once again, Phantoms able to get in the back line of the opposition and now has a free reign on anybody that's back over towards the site. K-Top could be the victim here. Shots in the back, gonna be clean and good. Two kills now go the way of Fisher. They can start getting themselves on the point because Northwood has to either commit to this flank here or push off spawn into free games. Dylan's gonna be up top there. Phantoms looking back. Infinite trying to challenge out. Three now, four kills, everybody down. Two, two we go. We're tied here going into the final round of a control. Round five on the docket, Amber. <laughs> This is a tale of two coins. Fisher trying to take a control of the series 3-0 and be on match in series point. Northwood trying to find their first win. And Northwood are going to have to do it on the defensive side where they've admittedly struggled. I mean, all teams have taken offense here in this one. So though Northwood usually fighting for defense, you're fighting for the opportunity to kind of just hold down the fort. Not going to be the case for them here as they will be on defense and, and trying to win it that way in round five. So I think if you're Fisher, you've got the slight edge based on how this has just gone plain and simple. Northwood, like you said, going to have to do some heroics to get on the board against Fisher, and Fisher really trying to put themselves at serious point. I got to be leaning Fisher offensively. Northwood's going to have to make it stick that much more. Try to walk away with the defense here, and I like the aggression coming in from Infinite. Unfortunately, quite the child to take across soccer field, but uh, yeah. again, they've had the life advantage this entire time. They were up lives, which is why they got defense. If they can get to a point where they can play a little bit of TDM, maybe stretch that life advantage, make Fisher think a little bit more, they could be sitting okay. But that opening break, clean out of Fisher, and they've already got a near take of progress at B. I mean, every fight that you take inside of control is going to have a microscope on it. Then that one from Infinite allows basically not only Fisher to have a four versus three, but you get the first kill off the board. There's already other people that are trying to figure out that A site as well and not allow another push to go towards the south side of the map. So lucky is Northwood, but they win the majority of the kills. So I don't know if luck is necessarily the word. I guess for now, it's going to be more of a safe harbor than anything else. We're tied at lives at 24 apiece, 55 seconds left on the clock. And you see the south side attack from Fisher. A site, their main objective now. Northwood going to try and break on back in. K-Top, first one to challenge. Phantoms is able to take him out, but Dak finds one on top of the radio tower and snaps to Gunsy inside of the point as well. Beautiful shots. First stick of progress completed, but the contest is in. Phantoms needs to be careful. He gets stun checked out in the corner. Rambi forced to back off, low HP, but now the Swan's gonna be close back up over towards B, but K-Top has read it. Mm. He's up top party. He's able to find Gunsy, and that completely negates really any sort of pressure that Fisher was trying to put on that B zone. And that's huge out of Dak just to get the information in reposition with the pack. Oh my gosh, I thought the snap was gonna be good, but doesn't oh. matter. Vaznev gonna do just as much damage. Dak putting it on him here was 11 and 11 a couple of rounds ago. Now it's a 27 and 16 on a 7 3. The crew's in the back pocket, 27 seconds to work with. Uh, again, if you're Fisher, you gotta be wondering when that could come to play. You know he's streaking here, continuing to roll over this team here in round number five. Defense was gonna be dicey for them. Looking a bit more confident here as they don't have anything oh to progress God. and the time still dwindling. I mean, he's just going on a tear through the spawn right now. He's finally put to rest, but there's still one in the back line, and it's infinite trying to make the plays here. Phantoms able to at least, uh, you know, come off the respawn block for a touch of help. But K-Tob up top party. The clock is stalled out. Second ticket progress could be here. But right now, Northwood has all the advantage in the world in terms of lives. They'll get back down over toward day. They slipped the net, but that streak could have just won the game for Northwood. Rambi taken out. Dak trying to fly back. Hip fire shot's not going to be good. The A zone, the last point of contestion here for Northwood. Still contested on the zone. Team kill could have been costly there, but he'll jump back across the screen. Bait and switch could have saved the round here for Fisher. Might be an extra 60 seconds added, but they only have eight lives 16 to 8 doubled up as the defense and now northwood gonna hold here for the extra minute and i think they just need to slow down not take these gunfights where they don't need to you can see the line absolutely halting here at this first third of the map and again they win a couple of, of those guys exit gunfights and now for fisher you take a breath phantom's able to find one but it's at least traded and directly out of k-tob no respawns remaining infinite oh, no. from the top rope might just be the dagger in the round and surely that is going to be the case has to be nothing short of a miracle here. Look who's here. Oh my Dak god. turns around and burns him down the map. Oh my god. Oh, you talk about sexy men. Dak is at the top of that list right now. Northwood will survive. Win the first defense when it mattered the most. They'll take their first map in this best of seven series. And finally, 
what seems after like an eternity, Northwood will finally have themselves on the board. Talk about Cotton 4K. I mean, 4,100 damage out of DAC, 35 and 18. And I, you can just feel the energy that's got to be radiating from that camp. I, I mean, that's definitely one where you're talking high octane comms. And uh, again, lots of good feelings after that one. It went all the way to around five, but DAC was just tunnel vision <laughs> the entire time on, on, you know, winning that one. And again, the team sitting in such a good position to bounce back finally in the series. I mean, they've got one on the board and that feels like uh, one for Northwood that it'd be crazy for Fisher to come back and strike back with a map yeah. in response. It just feels like we might handshake a couple rounds at a time here. But again, who knows? This series, like we said, it's going to be full of mysteries, full of surprises. Um, did we see that game five or that map three going that way? I don't know. I don't, I, I, after map two, I'm not sure of anything that's going to be happening in the series. Uh, again, all we can talk about is when these teams play to par, play to standard. It's just a beautiful yep. thing to watch. Fisher didn't play a horrific control by any stretch they, they played a very sure. strong search story it was a quiet one no one really had a big pop-off moment in the sense um the way the way that dak did it, and i think that's what pushed the uh, pushed uh, northwood over the finish line uh i just look i'm, I'm just enjoying this i'm having a hard time not being a fan right now i mean this is just this has just <laughs> been great cod to watch at, at, at its simplest terms yeah it really has uh that first hard point um, you, you know, it felt like it was trending towards the Northwood win. We were like, all right, well, all the all the stuff we talked about pre-show, it's coming true. Like, it's cool. It's nice to, you know, kind of set that storyline up and be like big bad. Uh, but then at the other hand, it's it's so fun when the other team is able to come out and just give a great performance. And Fisher did that for the first two maps. And even in the control there, mm -hmm. they tried their ashes off to try and get that there. And let me, let me tell you, they did. Um, and it was close at the end there. But again, it, not only Dak catching fire, but that streak that forced them to have to go down to a they pretty much had that b site if they wanted it and that yeah. was the scary thing because a is much easier to take and it's a lot easier to get yourselves lost on the defensive end down on the south side by a um but again it, it was it was just one of those things where northwood was able to turn up that dial just a touch mm -hmm. dak knows what it takes to win this entire northwood team knows what it takes to win but when you allow him to start moving around the map you get that smg mixy on a silo specifically in side of that pool room in the bar side when you're able to get in the spawn and you start feeling that hot hand and you feel like you can challenge anything and everything that's when a guy is specifically yeah. like Dak can get very very scary and Fisher found that out firsthand so now we find ourselves where Northwood has caught a bit of fire potential momentum now in their hands I don't want to get too far to the agenda of Northwood being able to bring this one back to a 2-2 split but we did say at the top of the show and it's been the common theme throughout the entirety of their reign at the top of the collegiate atmosphere northwood is a respawn team this team is incredible when it comes to hard point and control specifically they falter a touch in search and destroy but they're usually really good this is where they can bring it back if there was any mode that there was going to be you know put in front of them on a silver platter served up. hey tell them to bring out the hard point where did they call it like it is one of those things so hey northwood this is your time to bring it back to a 2-2 <laughs> stand and you say you say you couldn't hand a mode on a silver or uh, on a silver platter to him. I think map and a mode. We're going to an embassy hard point. I mean, with how fast they played that Asilo, uh, that's one that can mm -hmm. you know definitely have the pace turned up on it, but can also go to an absolute stalemate. And they kept that one really really quick for the entirety of it, and forced Fisher to kind of play at that level. And, and when they've dictated the pacing, you think back to the first set of rotations on Mercado when they're in control of the map flow and, and where they want to be. Yeah, they're absolutely going to put on the showing that they did not only to, to win that control, which again, went to a round five and, and lose the map one, but that they had the lead in the entire time. It's been hard fought wins and losses, uh, but it's one that when they can control it, they definitely are not going to uh, yep. be a team that goes down easily. So to go on embassy here, interesting to know what Dak does because you saw him with the AR and the sub, but the way he was just absolutely running amok with the Vaznev, uh, surely he keeps that out and you don't try to slow that roll at all. You just talk about it. Aggressive, fast gameplay is all that Northwood yep. want to do. Embassy is kind of like MW2's Bacage from Vanguard, where it's just like, good luck, have fun, um, be ready for an engagement at every turn, and then every turn that you're not expecting to. So for Fisher, I'm excited yeah. to see Gunzi. I feel like he's due for a big pop-off moment, right? We haven't really called his name too, too much in this series, and he's someone maybe, you know, we overshadowed the sense of talking about Dylan Rex and Phantoms being back together and how critical that is for this team's rapport. But uh, you got to think of Gunsy and Ramby and how at any moment they could turn things up to 10 and drop a 35 and 18 performance. So my eye, at least for Fisher, is going to be on Gunsy and, and what he's able to do as a sub to kind of counter what Dak just put on them in the ACLO.
Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of incredible players, uh, you can get an incredible education, not just within college, but with the Army ROTC. That's right. Go beyond your field of study and get a world-class education, not only in leadership, but plenty of other fields that they offer for you. Be a leader for life. Inspire others today. Scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen to learn more about the Army ROTC. And once again, be a leader for life. Thank you once again to the Army ROTC for being a proud and incredible sponsor here for the Nace Star League for not only the Open Premier, but the varsity season as well. That being said, Amber, uh, a few more technical issues being sorted out in the background between the two teams. So again, unfortunately, it's been a common theme here tonight. Uh, we're going to step aside, take a quick break. When we come back, a Northwood team with a bit of momentum tries to mount up and tie the series up at two apiece.
Well, here we go. Map four, Embassy Hardpoint, Northwood down one, two in the series, but a prime opportunity to be able to bring an even slate back up in the conversation. First blood goes the way of Dak, but Ramby, nice trade. Six points on the board here for Northwood early on. They've got themselves inside of P1. Really, it's going to be on Fisher College to do more of the same that they had on the Mercado Hardpoint. Keep the slaying at least close early on, but realistically, it all comes down to making sure that score line doesn't get too far out of hand to where a comeback becomes out of reach. Embassy with maybe a couple more spots that <clears throat> feel like money hills at times. I think a top ACP3 will get there soon enough for now. A lot of the same, as you said, to kick off this Mercado, or excuse me, kick off the Embassy that felt like the Mercado. Nice little 20 point buffer for Northwood, though they don't have the rotation nearly as locked. Dak making work of it here, able to find one. Could be able to take down two if he plays his cards right and does with the grenade. The truck exploding will find him that. And now Northwood spotting on this top right side of the map, have the ability to work south. It's going to be Fisher, maybe closer by footwork. Now they're going to find their way over here as this hill pops. Nice little double to pop things off here for P2. Infinite now going to be knocked off with a nade. So at least for now, Fisher is able to secure themselves not only the P2 spawn, but most of the map control. They forced Northwood into that top left sector of the map. So quartering them off, sectioning them to the best of their abilities. Rambi will fall, so that will be a crucial line of defense knocked off. And this is going to allow a few players to get themselves up and over the top. K-Top, Dak will both fall, though. So things changed just a touch. Fisher's been able to turn the initial 30 seconds into some substantial time. Pretty much getting all 60 seconds is going to be a must going over to P3. Northwood though forced all the way back into that top left sector of the map yet again a money hill indeed here for fisher early on it's exactly what they needed amber you have players constantly applying pressure for fisher around the map Dak going to try to be privy to ramby making this play and the tack iron just blocking that how many times have we seen that this year where you can't quite get the kill and you're not going to be able to find the other as well Dak stuck between a rock and a hard place as this new hill looks to pop and you already have someone top pd and that's going to be gunsy Good now Lord. working its way across pinstripe kill feed you're gonna have one player left and time that's gonna be k-top back needs to get position to help his teammate because the triple chow around the corner and they make slight work of her excuse me a double chow regardless they get the break and northwood still on the back foot down 20 points and we have foot race here down catwalk yeah but it was that lethal smoke screen that does come through at least helps northwood to hold on for a moment mock a double to secure things off four down fisher on the opposite end now coming off the respawn block Dylan should be the first one to take a gunfight here. Peppered some shots over the top, but really nobody close enough to make work to get back up towards top P3. Inside of the embassy building, though, the rotation has been committed to. Ooh. Phantom's the first one to fall. Dak will wisely back off, re-challenge with the rest of his teammates. And this should at least allow Northwood to get some crucial positioning here back over towards embassy. It was a dicey decision for Fisher to rotate at about 30 seconds, but it is going to at least work for them at the moment. Unfortunately, though, they're knocked down. Northwood holding in inside of the embassy. Mine 10 team spree for Northwood. Unanswered kills. I mean, Dak, as long as he's alive, he is a problem. Phantom's dealing. Gonna combine for a couple. Three for one of the feed. Mox Trophy, though, gonna get the last laugh for a moment. There should be quick on the break. Let's try to rally back to the tight score line. As we expected, this hard point to go early on. Again, the kills, handshaking back and forth, clean kill feeds for either team at different points. But really, I want to see a team get a good break and be able to, you know, find a way to get in early, right? The rotating team, mm -hmm. one who's been here first, have been able to lock down the most amount of time. Northwood got close, at least for P4, to try to find a way in early. But again, it has been Fisher here in the kill feed, continuing to show just that one player left alive, going to be taken care of. No team has been able to successfully break, and now the last 20 seconds, you're going to have to rotate to P5. Gunsy already on the wrap, and Northwood looking to respond once again. I mean, this has just been fun so far. You know, it seems that every stretch, there there has been some sort of big team push that has come out that has allowed one team to get some good momentum. This is really the first time where we've seen a team in a position to start growing a lead a bit further. Rotating here and towards the Kitchen Hill first is the side of Fisher. So now at 10 and 5, leading the way is Dylan. Inside of the hard point, Infinite tries for a challenge, not able to find it. 2-2 two, two split allows the side of Fisher to stay inside of the Kitchen for now. Respawn now going to be forced to Northwood. Everybody spawning back over by P4 Embassy Hill. 20 seconds goes the way of Fisher, and now they can continue to run this up as another kill goes their way. Northwood battling tooth and nail. Nearing a 60, 70 point deficit for them here. They just, again, have not been able to break whenever Fisher gets a good luck on a hill. Of course, as I say that, they find the break with at least some substantial time left on the board. 25 seconds they're able to work towards. That would help them cross the 100 point mark as we go into the next set of rotations. So Dak going to try to do everything he can for his team to carve them a lane towards mid-map just to step out of the door. 
to make that rotation. But once again, Northwood forced out towards the top hand side of the map and Fisher in the better position once again with a 50 to near 60 point lead. Next set of rotations kicked off and what makes this nerve wracking for Northwood is uh, again, they're slaying a little bit slow here, but it just feels like Fisher is playing at another level right now. It's not the same as map one felt where, you know, Fisher just needed to turn slaying around and things could turn up for them. Northwood seemed to be stopped at every turn in this hard point. I mean, look at the slaying. It's just so much more in the hands of Fisher now. They're the ones who are being able to control the map. They've won the majority of gunfights at every turn, and it's all in part to Dylan and Phantoms, the dynamic duo, being able to pair themselves together with that bloodline that they have, the beautiful COD that they're able to share with one another. 155 to 86, a 70-point advantage here for Fisher as we get back to our second set of rotations. We're 40 seconds through P1, 20 on the rotation, and Northwood has already decided to give up all of middle map they don't even want to try and contest for the last 15 seconds they need to make sure that they lock down p2 to get themselves substantial time but as dylan's able to find infinite on the opposite end here comes the push from fisher to try and get the south side of the map at least you have k top trying to play disruptor through the middle will challenge late giving northwood the early rotation and teams at this high of a level are going to function best when they can control and know what's coming next. Again, I said it for Northwood coming into this one. They play so much better whenever they're controlling the pace, whenever they can predict where spawns are. They don't have that in their control right now. It's all Fisher, and that's exactly why they're struggling when you're playing against teams is good, right? Fighting off the back foot is never a position you want to be in, so Northwood are looking to try to get a good P2 and try to find themselves a good rotation, get that map control back that we saw early in the Mercado hard point, get themselves at least ahead of the curve this time around because they seem to be falling behind. Now they're still down 60 points and a very contested P2 still. I mean, Rabbi's just trying to be annoying here, and he's actually going to be able to walk away with a kill for it. Make it two. Somehow stays alive. Had two players spraying at him. They pushed for 20 seconds, and what would have seemed like child's play to say that Northwood needed that full 60 turns the opposite conversation to where now Fisher not only get the last 20 seconds of scrap, but at least from, excuse me, at the very beginning of things, have themselves set up at the top of P3. So, still going to be dust out over the top. Mach going to try and find one under Rambi. Well, at least make work for the process. Two kills go the way of Phantoms, though who has now eclipsed the side of Fisher over that 200 point mark. Northwood down by almost 100 points in a respawn mode where they've been consistently the best at throughout the entirety of the last two years of Collegiate Call of Duty. Things starting to crumble here. Fisher, 40 seconds from a win. Oh man, and they're just running into irons. They have to get in. If there was ever a worse hill to try to find time on, it's going to be this one. This will put them at about 10 or so seconds away from closing this one out. Actually, sorry, they could still win this one out. So Northwood have to apply pressure. They have to contest for a moment. Otherwise, Fisher will close this one out and will find themselves a series point. Good Lord. It's got to be a break here from Northwood, but the kill's not going their way. Nobody able to get close over towards the point, but the contest is in. It's going to be Dak inside of it. Now takes his second kill in a row. Gunsy the next one in a line. But here's the problem. The rotation back over towards Embassy. Once again, one initially by the side of Fisher, and now Northwood has to collapse upon it. Spawn's going to be close. Three versus three, potentially for the game here. Fisher inside. No contestion in just yet. Mock looks the wrong way. Hip fire shots good. Second one there. Ramby falls. Dylan the last one to survive. And now it's a foot race from Fisher to get back across the map. The only one close is K-Tob. Challenge on the Phantom's going to be good. Into the back line. Three seconds. Contest has to be in. He's got two in a row. Looking for the last one. Northwood here but fisher are winning the gunfights they're gonna close it out on embassy a 3-1 lead to take it now to series point one map away from them being able to take their back-to-back -back champion in open premiere gunsy with the three piece to close it out i think that's what we'll see here a quiet 19 and 17 but right there enough to stave off northwood if they got that break you'd think they'd have enough numbers to maybe force it to a p5 it was a dire situation either way and look at the non-traded kills. I mean, everyone was 15 or more non-traded kills for Fisher. It was just slang dominance from start to finish. There, there's not much else to say, really, apart from, uh, you know, everything we've set up until this point. It has been all Fisher. <sighs> and even when it hasn't been Fisher for a moment and Northwood shows glimpses of themselves, you get a round five control. So for, for, for Fisher, you're fairly satisfied with how things have gone, especially because you're on series point for Northwood. I mean, you know, you can't win them all in a sense. And sure, there's still plenty of cards to be had and played. So, uh, again, not calling this one over just yet. But it just, this did not feel like the opportunity or the time that they were going to come and mm. fall as short as they have. Because, I mean, again, they have to rip off, what, three, four straight maps in order to, or excuse me, three straight maps 
to take this one and guess what we're going to a search and destroy it's on hotel which is you know yep. be the more classic bread and butter type of feeling search but um slaying has not been there for them barring dax monster performance to get them over the hump of a game five control win yeah has been slow for them since the first set of hills from Mercado, and, and you can only back and back to that so long before it becomes irrelevant to what Fisher has wiped away and, and written anew for themselves. Absolutely. Um, wow. This, this this series is good, <laughs> man. It's good. Now, I, now you, you would have told me that Fisher was going to beat Northwood by over 125 points in a hard point. I would have laughed in your face hysterically at the beginning of this series. You could make every excuse in the book and be like, oh, Northwood might not be playing this game. They might be playing MW3, which could be true. However... You still have to come and perform in the old game that has been around for and not only an entire year, but you only been playing the game, you know, the new game for about two, you know, two and a half weeks here. So, again, you can make every excuse in the book, but I, I think the more important conversation is that Fisher looks very solid. And it seems like, at least right now, the substitution to knock Silly out of the equation and bring in somebody else. Now, I don't know if that was an internal team decision, but regardless, the, the, the switch of players has made this team, at least on paper and in game look better and i think we are getting a huge glimpse of that and they have proven it to us throughout the first four games so we'll step aside we'll take a break when we come back a search and destroy this could be to close out the series fisher looking good a 3-1 lead They saw a 3-1 lead for Fisher over Northwood here tonight. 
that is what the reality of life is showing us at the moment. Fisher came to play here tonight in the late moments of Modern Warfare 2. Probably the final time we'll see most of anybody playing it at the competitive level, and specifically at the collegiate level, unless there's a throwback tourney of some capacity. Yeah, right. Fisher have been electric. And that really goes in part, Dylan and Phantoms being able to pair together. Obviously, you know, don't take anything away from Gunzi and Rambi, but uh, I mean, it, it, those two have been the talk of the town the entire night, Amber. They really have been. And we talked about how important, uh, at least for Fisher, right? That duo getting back together is how impactful. And, and again, the, the stats show how good they are with one another. And this series has been nothing shy of that. Northwood just simply haven't had an answer barring Dax's monster performance, 35 and 18, and the issue low control really have not been able to answer the duo that they've been able to uh, bring to the table. Again, no two players have been as consistent for um, Northwood on the other side. And again, you got to think Bink is missing as well. Who is the yeah. duo that's been there for years for Northwood? Bink and Infinite. And, and, and again, you got to think, and that's not to knock on any of these players, but it, maybe if it was duo for duo, I would love to have seen that matchup here tonight. We don't get it. And now Northwood, you have to say, who else is going to step up and try to supplement um, this gameplay? Who else is going to rise up and, and you know stop? what would be a 4-1 series victory for Fisher if they are not able to take the search and destroy. No. And that's kind of where the conversation pivots, and that's where things get a bit scary because if we think to maybe 35 minutes ago, that map 2 was not pretty. No, it was not. It, it really was not. But uh, before we do hop into map number four, I do want to say a big thank you to the sponsors that make things possible here for the Nace Star League season. CDW Alienware, Pizza Hut, Extra Life, Monster Energy, Duncan, Mavix, which again, big cheer guy, uh, Odyssey, Mushroom, Elixir, the U.S. Army, ROTC, and the L.A. Comic Con. Once again, thank you so much to those people that make this Nace Star League season possible across all of our different esports that we have for us. But Amber, back to the conversation at hand. You nailed it directly on the head. Conversation has pivoted. And oh boy, we are in a, a heaping pile of... Uh, I don't know where we are because this has never happened to us <laughs> beforehand where Northwood has been in possession like this. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah. We've pretty much given every thought of, of level of mind blown from, you know, not much to nameless as far as things are concerned here. And Fisher have really, you know, put us up towards the top of that uh, in the best way possible. In the absolute yeah. best way possible. Yeah. Again, we can, we cannot state enough that it is not anything Fisher is doing that we're like, wow, this is insane. It's more so the lack of, like you said, the bar that we have set for Northwood. And really, they've set them themselves the last several years. Mm -hmm. The standard they play at that has felt and been unwavering, um, it, it's, it's wavering. And, and again, yeah. the search and destroy, you said I expected them to bend, not break. Now that standard of gameplay is at a bend, not break point. And this map very much decides that for them because they're about at max capacity as far as bending goes. And Fisher absolutely has, you know, maybe the final dagger that can send that over the edge. And again, for Fisher, this is impressive gameplay out of them. It's been over the top consistent. Again, that control loss, sure, it was around five. It could have gone either way. Um, but it's been so consistent from them throughout the night and it's impressive of course and that's not to take away from what they've been able to do it'd be a very deserving 4-1 victory if they're able to take it again it's just the, the fact that northwood has come out so flat we expected a series not quite the fashion it's broken down and, and now no. it's almost you know you caught a doordash for, for northwood might be an uber eats on the flip side of things for fisher college no. because they're trying to walk out with a 4-1 here um <laughs> and get a victory quickly on the other side of things so plain and simple I mean, again, we like to dice things up on the desk, dissect it, uh, you know, put things under a microscope. Northwood, they have to turn things around. They have to get things going, and it starts with slaying. What worse mode to go into for slaying than search and destroy? <laughs> um, but ways you can control that first blood column. Sure. Find yourself in more <laughs> man advantage situations. Um, don't get shot first. About all I got for you. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's as deep as my playbook goes. Just just win your ones, and uh, surely the search and destroy goes better than a 6 0. Oh, look, I'll pick up and drop exactly what you're talking about. First blood column. Uh, here's the thing. Five to six was the ratio for uh, the six rounds of Search and Destroy played on Fortress. Earlier in this best of seven series, it was mm -hmm. Fisher who was on the five side. It was one singular first blood within those six rounds for Northwood. Um, that simply cannot happen. Uh, in the one round where they did get the first blood, they weren't able to win it because it was six straight rounds where Fisher was the better team. They molly them, for lack of better words, on that search and destroy for map two. 
Here we go again, map five. Usually this closes out a best of five series. We're at a two, two standpoint at this point. And uh, you know, best the first to three, this side and the best of seven uh, usually isn't the decider um, for the most part, I should say. Um, but look, it feels like it's a normal COD series. We're going to that game five. Fisher has everything, you know, kind of in their favor right now, Northwood everything to lose going into this or maybe nothing to lose at the same time uh, you, you've won three straight championships for the nace star league whether that be in 2022 where you won in vanguard twice earlier this year in april where you won in indianapolis for fisher really all you have inside of the nace star league is last year for the open premiere you were able to win that grand final that's cool it's not three of them it's one of them again still the point i made earlier it's still difficult to win even just one but mm -hmm. northwood dropping down from the varsity premiere to the open premiere is something Something that we kind of had a microscope on everybody thought it was just going to kind of be easy pickings for him here we go search and destroy hotel first time we've seen this in the series beautiful we love this yes we do a site offense player number three that's infinite has the bomb inside of his hands dylan rex Ooh. finds the first blood in the conversation that we just had not even three minutes ago holds true yet again main disadvantage no one across the bottom bed and of course you still have Gunzi there lying away for whoever wants to get a little aggressive. And your furthest advanced player trying to find a trade is going to be infinite with the bomb. So you know that's a play that works out well every single time. Infinite going to be taken down. Now you got to retrieve bomb, but good luck. Have fun with that as you're getting chopped down. And just, yeah, isolate 1v1 for him. Just run into irons as solo chows and see if that pans out for you. Northwood, at least we round number one. Looking like a bit of the same. I thought for a second we were going to get the rocker. Optic lineup. They sure take care of business, though. Would have been cool, but yeah, yeah, we're just going to slide around that door real quick. Hey, I mean, uh, Gunzi finds himself two in the round with that Vaznev. I mean, that's just vicious work right there up close with the submachine gun. Tack probably should have won that, let's be completely honest with ourselves, but the headshot multiplier are going to save him there in that regard. So, flawless first round from Fisher. They'll have four up, Northwood four down. Realistically, I mean, the round kind of went to Dylan specifically, got that first blood was able to bait the second player out for Gunzi inside a top window to be able to drop down, find that second, and you know, the rest was history from there on out. So offensive try here for Fisher. They're going to be trying to bring the bomb over towards A. They're actually going to fake this out, keep the bomb by its lonesome, and push a couple players over towards the restaurant. Good trade there from Rambi. Evens things out at three versus three. Only 15 seconds drained off the clock so far, but for the first time since the second round of the Asilo Search and Destroy, Northwood have a lead in the round. Rotation back towards B. Trying to clear that out before they work back towards this A site, but thinking a little too hard about it. And now you're going to have player K top isolated on the side alone. Going to get eyes on it, so that's going to be the wrap. Both players immediately flying back towards the site to try to get themselves numbers. But unfortunately, Dylan Rex is running loose below. You got to know that he could be working here. K top has absolutely made that calm out. And Phantom's going to get the bomb down for free before they take care of that. But until you get Dylan Rex out of bottom bed or bottom uh, <clears throat> hotel, oh. yeah, he's, he's going to do things like that. And it's so difficult, too, because you had a three versus two man advantage. But now that the bomb's down, you have a time restraint on yourselves and you really have no idea where the second player is. Sure, you might have an idea of where Dylan is, but you're going to run directly into his iron sight. Three row. Now for Dylan, K-Tob last alive. Turns back around, not able to find the shots once again. Got first bullet. Looked like he should have probably taken the gunfight away. And I'll be willing to bet a couple dollars that this was all in part due to that headshot multiplier that was so tasty. And there it is. Last kill, last mm -hmm. bullet. Edge, yeah, multiplier. Two rounds to Fisher. What should have been a North round, round win, or at least appeared to go in their favor. Falls to the opposite wayside. Fisher looking good. It's, it's looking something, that's for sure. It's like a dire <laughs> for Northwood. We are two rounds into the search, but uh, again, you zoom out just a little bit, and you're looking down the barrel of a 4-1 grand finals loss. With just two kills on the board through two rounds. Definitely not a good way to start things off. k -Tob almost can't buy a kill, but ends up getting it at least at a discounted rate. Rambi gonna fall. Man advantage here. Bomb going down towards A. So, uh, again, a couple thumbs up for Northwood here. I mean, that, that's two boxes checked. The third one is winning the round. I might not hold my breath for this one, but Dak with the sniper gonna connect. I like the decisiveness out of Northwood to get that bomb down quickly. That little back foot pace that they had set for themselves not going to happen in this round. They completely flipped the pace into their favor where they excel every single year. Dylan going to be looking in the back line. Heard a few footsteps, drops down, finds k -Tob, who tries to drop shot again. And all of a sudden, this mock left alive in a one versus two. He's just going to hop it. Gunzi's going to be stuck on the bomb. Dylan in the back line is going to walk away with the kill. And it collapses <laughs> once again for Northwood. 3-0 late for Fisher. Oh, no. Surely not. I mean, 
<laughs> you got the first blood. You got bombed down. You milked most of the clock. And then just... It just wasn't enough. I guess it's just not enough. I mean, Fisher is just lights out right now, and that doesn't even cover it. They are running this. And I don't know, have a gander at the scoreboard if you'd like, and maybe see why Why could that be. Uh, perhaps because through three rounds, Dylan Rex has a cruise missile, um, and, and that might give you a little insight as to why they're doing so well. And maybe because, you know, he has more kills than the entire Northwood team combined. I cannot believe that sentence just left my mouth, but it did. And Fisher running towards B. They're controlling the pace. They control everything. And uh, K Top, yeah, your teammates cannot get here fast enough. He's by himself. Challenge around the corner. K Top finds one. Dylan trades it out. Seven in a row. Could go ahead and get this bomb down, but the reinforcements have arrived very quickly. Infinite on the other side of the door, though. Bomb, 45 seconds left. It is a three versus three. You got to break into the kitchen, which has been so hard for so many teams all year long. Semtech's going to be out. Another one tossed in. Might take out a teammate in the process, oh. but Phantom's in the corner. We'll pop a double. And once again, Northwood, one player alive versus too it's mock with a lot of time to play with here but needs to start making a decisive move going inside of the corner nobody's gonna even think to check that one place the credit corner to the best of his advantage that is 10 straight rounds for fisher in a search and destroy over northwood the collapse of an empire a dynasty perhaps falling here tonight and dylan rex the one man wrecking ball making this happen in this search and destroy to close things out it has been nothing short of impressive the impact those Phantoms and Dylan Rex have had on this series combined. 12 kills between the two of them through four rounds. You don't have to do anything if you're Gunsy and Ramsey. Just call out where you're seeing people if you could even see them first. Infinite zero kills on the board. Mock with one. I mean, K-Top again. Uh, there's just, yeah, you look at the scoreboard. It, it just gets more dire and dire the longer you gander at it. And, and now for Northwood, I mean, you have to pull out all the stops here. Sure, there's two rounds left, but you have to make something stick. This round is do or die. We're almost at a point where Northwood's oh, going to have to rattle off six straight rounds to win a search and destroy. Dak going to find one over the top. Finally, they give themselves where they're in a one versus two, but now it's a one versus one. Infinite going to plant it. Ramby playing so far across on the opposite side of the map. Things getting tense here. Infinite can feel the weight of the world on his shoulders right now. Ramby. Doesn't have dead silence to work with. Stomping around loud as ever. Inside of the kitchen. Stun check out. Doesn't find anything yet. Closes the backside door. Infinite waiting inside of the restaurant. Patiently 25 seconds left here in the round. Infinite's going to start creeping forward. They're just around the opposite side of each other. Ramby isn't going to be able to take it. Northwood finally finds a round. After losing 10 straight, they decide to put their foot down. And Infinite makes it happen. Poof. A sigh of relief, I think, more so than anything for Northwood. But again, they have a long way to go in this map to carve back at this. Sure, you give yourself one round room for error, but it's going to have to be a night and day performance flip for these guys. I mean, again, Infinite finds three in the round. That's an excellent start. But defensively, you have to take care of the map at this point. You need a first blood. Better yet, you've got to be in good positions to not let them get this bomb down for free. You finally killed the raid boss, but right back at you. Fisher says it. They're going to be able to take one. Mock just able to survive in the back long stretch of the bottom bedroom side. Dak will take a few shots to ring out, but once again, Fisher in advantage. Four versus three. 30 seconds off the clock. Bomb hasn't made its way onto the site just yet. Still a few players from Northwood here to try and cause some, oh, some problems at the very least, but here we go. Rambi, no way. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Oh my god, what a kill. I mean, that's just... Uh, Fisher can do no wrong at this point. Rex still finding kills. 10-1. and one. It's just impressive. It's show-stopping. It's everything you would want out of a player here to search and destroy that could solidify oh. series for you. Mock, trying to have a head on a swivel. Swivel, spinning a little too quick. Map point. Series point. Fisher College with... Uh, again, what we called coming into the show as an upset, but with how well they've played the entire series. I don't know. <laughs> I feel on that. Ones are in the air. Everybody cheer it one more round. Here we go. Offensive attempt from Northwood to keep their season alive. Keep this series alive. And all that's in front of them are two bomb sites and four players on the opposite end. 
A Semtex thrown right off the rip doesn't bode well, giving me flashbacks of the final round from Fortress before. Afraid who's gonna carry this bomb. And I, you can just see. I mean, this is a, this is shades of a Northwood we've never seen before. They are Terrified. just hunkered in spawn. Terrified. Trembling, shaking, screaming, crying, throwing up. I holding hands to make any move around the map. I mean, this is uh, this is just unreal what we're seeing here. I mean, Fisher College has them just shaking in their boots. But for now, they get over towards this A site. They find a couple of good kills. So maybe the hand holding look both ways before you cross the street. Gonna pan out for them. Speaking of for them, four quick kills down. They get another one on the board. Whew. I, whatever, it ta whatever it takes, right? I mean, whatever yeah. it takes. Well, I mean, look, the only thing that breaks that setup is a well-placed nade, but a trophy system that was down there at least is able to keep them alive. And you said it. Touching each other just a bit, a little Sweet Caroline action towards the middle of the map. Find the first blood, take them all down with them. A flawless round from Northwood was good enough for one, but they've got to do that four more times if they want to extend this series. It's looking very, very difficult. But here we go. Offensive round. Fisher looking to push themselves back over towards this A site. It's a 1-2-1 one, one split. Infinite, the first one up for a challenge. Rambi finds the first blood. Four versus three, bomb down. Now they're going to try to work towards this. Dak has to find one of these kills. He has to be able to at least mitigate this effort. He gets up close and personal, so if he gets to this door with good timing, he might be able to find one now. He's pinned down once again, and I uh, get your pinned down by perhaps the worst place possible. Oh, no. Dylan Rex not going to miss that lob. Able to connect for the final kill. Oh, Maybe. no, here we go. Hey, top in the back lines, but again, it's not going to be enough. The damage has been done. It's a 1v4. So many people have been preying on the downfall. Gunsy's gonna team kill Phantoms. Gives K-Top an opportunity here. He's able to pre-fire one. Rambi, top window. Shots to the wall are good. K-Top, the saving grace here from Northwood. Could the team kill by Gunsy change the tide of this series? K-Top's gonna lay down on the bomb. Gunsy's gonna start making his way forward. Needs to get there quickly. Shots are gonna be good. And that's the final kill that puts the nail in the coffin. Northwood, after three straight national titles, will get dethroned by Fisher. Gunzi, Dylan, Rambi, and Phantoms are champions once again, back to back here in the Modern Warfare 2 season. Dominance, consistency, confidence, everything you would want in a grand finals for a team to be able to win. Fisher College put that on display. I mean, a masterclass, a masterclass of Call of Duty here to close out MW2 for open premiere. Everything Fisher did was pencil perfect. I mean, if you want to go back and watch a VOD on, you know, how to play a perfect hard point, how to play perfect search and destroy, how to play a, a damn good control. This is the one I would send you every time. Northwood University up into that point, throughout the Modern Warfare 2 season and throughout the entirety of the Vanguard year, were undefeated. They didn't lose a single series throughout the entire time that they played these last two titles. And for the first time, and what seems like forever, there seems to be light at the end of the tunnel for multiple teams to be able to face Northwood head on. Parity within the collegiate scene potentially could be with it could be the time. Is the dynasty over? This is an optic talk. We're not, I'm not I'm not Jack Courage <laughs> Dunlop in this situation, but, it, but I'll ask you this, Amber. At the beginning of this series. You and I both predicted that this would probably be a 4-1 to one series win for the Northwood side of things. We didn't think that there would be much in the way of Northwood to be able to lose this series. It was on Fisher. How could you be able to turn the tides to force yourselves a back-to-back -back championship in Open Premier? And they did just that. They did everything yeah. correctly. They played perfectly together. The first hard point on Mercado was the perfect embodiment of how this series goes for them. They start out... A deficit. Northwood probably thinking they had an easy win within their grasps yet again as they had the entire time they played throughout the collegiate scene. Instead, they're able to keep it close. The slang starts to turn up. Dylan and Phantoms play off the energy that each other had. Gunsy's hot start allowed them to stay within that, within that first map. They win it. They take a 6-0 S&D win. They win the control 3-2. to two, Or excuse me, Northwood wins the control 3-2. to two, But then they bounce back. They win the Embassy Hardpoint by 130 points. Something we have never seen on the side of anybody placing against Northwood. And then finally in that last search and destroy, it was almost 12 straight rounds of S&D. Only bombarded by two. It's a 12-2 to two difference in the S&Ds. In the non-respawn modes inside of this series. Northwood. 
pants dropped on the main stage. That was a wonderful I mean, match by Fisher. Gorgeous, beautiful, just stunning, was. cunning. Any word you can use to describe something that is magnificent. It was it was great. And again, now that we you know you kind of hit the fact that we called Northwood four one. Um, just goes to tell you how quickly that that Mercado slang turnaround for Fisher does not matter. Uh, we talk about the ten timings, uh, the ten cod caster timings that don't go your way. Yeah, calling Northwood four <laughs> one definitely one of those that kind of balances the scale for tonight. So at least we're one to one. But uh, maybe the bigger mistake was a Northwood four one here. But again, if you know collegiate, if you know how things have gone. They weren't flirting with the idea of Dynasty for nothing. That doesn't mean it's completely ruled out. We might still get our optic moment next semester. Sure. Who knows? The curse could be broken at some point. But again, for now, Fisher going to take care of business in Open Premier. A well-deserved 4-1 victory here in the series to crown themselves champions to walk away with a $4,000 pot as well. I mean, again, I just, I can't say enough <laughs> things about how entertaining that yeah. series was. It was a, uh, we've seen 4-1s that have been just snooze fests and, and, you know, ones that are just like, one team's really good and they just came out and played. Um, these were close maps at times. And even when they weren't close, it was just exhilarating to watch how well Fisher was executing both sides of the bomb on every round, on every rotation. It was just, it was fantastic Call of Duty uh, map in and map out. It was. It was gorgeous. <laughs> I could mimic those words and echo them through the chambers of time. Yeah. But one thing remains true. Fisher are the first team to be able to take down Northwood in two years. Look, that's not to say that, you know, maybe the focus of Northwood isn't really on this and they want to focus all of their efforts on the Modern Warfare 3 season and that we might see an even stronger Northwood team next year in the collegiate semesters that are going to be ahead of us upon the new title. But I, I will say this. The one thing that is going to ring true is that Northwood is now a beatable team. So many teams were scared of going up against them because of the pedigree that they had built themselves. And sure, they might not have been playing with one of their most important and influential players tonight in Bank. k Top might have tried to step up and fill that role. Unfortunately, it really wasn't even on him. It was on everybody on the Northwood roster. Nobody really being able to take that initiative to be able to lead the team through the hardships. Dak had a great opportunity, and he did inside of the control, but that was only one map in a seven-game series. Mm -hmm. And that is the difference maker between Fisher and Northwood here tonight. Fisher came to play. Fisher was ready. Fisher had all four players ready to do whatever it took to be able to win the series. And a huge, huge shout-out to Dylan Rex, the most impactful player inside of the series, a clear MVP of this best of seven in this grand final final in my book and once Absolutely. again a big congratulations to this Fisher roster for being able to be the first team to take down the most uh devastating roster that we've seen pretty much in all of collegiate uh call of duty esports for not to not to bring that into broader terms into other esports but yeah. i will say this before we go ahead and sign out once again a huge shout out to the people and the, uh, the, the brands that make this possible uh cdw alienware pizza hut extra life Monster Energy, Dunkin' Donuts, Mavix, Odyssey Mushroom Elixir, LA Comic Con, and the U.S. Army ROTC. Once again, thank you so much to our sponsors for helping us bring this season of the Nace Star League to life. We're not done with Call of Duty just yet, though. We have our open premiere done, but we still have our varsity premiere, which will be taking place this weekend on LAN. I'm excited, but Cash, that's something we can talk about at a different time. Closing thoughts on this before we wrap it up and send us <laughs> off. Yeah, I, uh, I, I just, I just fantastic series out of Fisher College, entertaining to watch because of just the masterclass that Dylan Rex put on the the duo pairing with Phantoms again, and um, you know, again, it was just wonderful. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I will say this. <laughs> <Please. laughs> hey, look, I, I, it's a, it's a little hard to swallow what we just saw on side of this. <laughs> Well, I guess that's the perfect way to go ahead and wrap things up here tonight, folks. It has been a wonderful grand finals for our open premiere. Fisher at the top of open premiere once again. Back to back championships for them here inside of the Modern Warfare 2 season. They take down Northwood at the end of that journey and now could start to build something great of their own going into the Modern Warfare 3 year. Thank you once again to not only Cash for being with me here for the majority of the stream. 
<laughs> but all the production that makes this possible, the sponsors, as well as you who continue to not only tune into the broadcast, but support, love, and cherish everything that we do here at the NACE Star League. That being said, have a phenomenal rest of your night. Stay safe, and we will see you this weekend on land for the wrap-up of the NACE Star League season for the Varsity Premier League.